call our meeting back to order. Uh, in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Uh, to our guests and those watching on cable this evening, the first item on our agenda are minutes. And the minutes of November 3rd were passing over. I don't believe they were completed yet. That's so right. I have a pass over. November 7th, regular session. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 7th, 2016, regular session mi minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. We also have a regular session of December 5th. Mr. Ewell. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, sorry. I said the 5th, right? December 5th. December 5th. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 5, 2016 executive session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. You, you're doing the executive session first, that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry, that, no, that's, that's okay. what I have here. On the executive session minutes. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? We also have the regular session meeting minutes of December 5th. Play out of order, Jeff. At December 7th, uh, okay, let me make sure. I have Monday, uh, Okay, I got November 7th regular session and uh, November 7th. Um, well, the agenda says session. November 7th regular session. There's no executive session for There's November. There's no executive session. Okay, November 7th. Oh, I have two sets here, though. You get December 5th. I have two sets here. No November 7th, Monday. Right. November 7th, Monday. Regular session, we just did. Right. We got two copies of it. They don't look the same, though. I'm just looking look at the, the same. I'm confused here. Maybe the secretary can help us out here. Maybe yeah. they may be entitled wrong on the top. That's what I'm guessing. That's just the date at the top, probably. Executive session, Jeff. For uh, Mr. Chairman, why don't we uh, just yeah, okay. pa pass on, uh, on the, the minutes and we can do we'll it, come the, back we can do the, it the next okay. Do it later or do it at the next meeting. Okay. Now we have guests here from uh, the Metropolitan uh, Regional Public School. And, uh, we have our yes, thank Mrs. you very Diamond. much for inviting us here tonight. Um, I have with me uh, Mr. David DeBerry, who is the superintendent at Northeast Vocational School. Uh, Dave and I, uh, along with our principal Carla, had an opportunity last week to um, address the uh, school committee. And that's where we saw Mr. Vasari and invited us here tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Dave. I know your biggest concern is where, where, where are we with moving forward with the new school? Uh, and we are at the very early stages, uh, moving, working hard towards that goal. So I'm going to uh, let Dave DeBerry give you a brief overview of where we are, and then if you have any specific questions, we'll be glad to address those. Thanks, Judy. So as I presented last week, unfortunately, we were not uh, chosen this year by the MSBA um, to be part of the new school building project. We are already underway, though, for our statement of interest to be submitted for next year. Our hope would be, once again, that we are, are accepted next year. 
This year we were looking at about a 72% reimbursement rate. So it was really a great opportunity for us. Our hope is that next year, um, if accepted, that the rate would be uh, the same as it was this year. Um, the, the building definitely isn't going to be any better <laughs> next year than it was this past year, so I can't imagine um, that it would go down much. I think most importantly what, what I wanted to get across was the uh, looking at the long-term fiscal impact, the earliest that um, there would be any uh, fiscal responsibility for many of the towns would be at least six years. So it's not a situation where um, you know, we're going to be looking to North Reading or any of our towns in the next couple of years for money and not making sure that you are all well prepared. Um, for, for any um, fiscal responsibility that you may have. Um, I think, you know, as you have all built a, a new school, you understand the cost. I, but the fortunate thing with Northeast is that it would be divided amongst 12 communities. And it would be based on student enrollment. And the North Reading enrollment is minimal. Um, your share of the, the project would then be minimal. Um, you know, I wouldn't have exact figures, but we're looking somewhere in range of 3% of the um, project, which then you would look at a 72% reimbursement of that 3% um, divided over 30 years. So uh, our hopes is that it wouldn't affect um, the taxpayers to the level that a new school might in your town. Um, it's definitely something our students need. Uh, we have a wait <coughs> list of over 300 students that are trying to get into Northeast. It's, it's, a, it's a school that's providing jobs to companies in local areas. And it's, it's something that we feel is best, um, best suited for the communities at this point. I, I did want to open up if there were any, any questions. Well, uh, at the school committee presentation, you yeah. talked a little bit about uh, where you were proposing to put the building, who the architect, who the guy to uh, do the preliminary work. Uh, perhaps you could tell the sure. a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you. So what we did was we had a, a pre-feasibility study because I, I think before we, we jumped into the MSBA pipeline, we wanted to make sure that, that we had all our ducks in, in a row and we wanted to make sure we were providing the best option for the towns. So Dorm Whittier did a pre-feasibility study for us and we looked at different objects, um, different options rather. Um, we didn't go straight to see what it would be, what we would need for a new school. We first looked at could the school be renovated? We looked at a second option and about whether we could renovate and build an addition, and then the final option would be a, a new school. And I think <coughs> Durham Witte objectively came up to the conclusion where it would not be feasible to do a renovation, and it would not be feasible to do a renovation in an addition. Um, it would cost just as much, if not more, than building an actual school, and it would not be the optimum um, you know, educational facility when it was done. So that's how we came to the conclusion that a new school would be our best option. Being a vocational school and being a one school district, we don't have the option of moving our students temporarily to another site while it's being built. So we would have to find a place on our property where we could build the school and then after it was completed, close down the current facility we're in right now. Fortunately, we do have a lot of land on our site, and we did find a place behind Northeast where currently we have some practice fields that would be conducive to building the new school. Uh, after the main building was built, we would then consider knocking down the current building, and that's where our fields or parking would go. Um, once again, that was a pre-feasibility study. It could change. Um, if we are accepted into the MSBA uh, pipeline and we are um, able to do a full feasibility study. But we're, we're pretty certain that we would definitely have the land, the space, and it, it, would, it would work for us. 
Could you tell us a little bit about the approval process? Excuse me? The approval process, <coughs> not from the MSBA, but from the local sure. communities. Sure. So right now we would need a unanimous vote from all 12 districts. Um, and that would be our hope. So we would really, um, really try to sell the importance of this project to you, um, get your support, and then we would be able to move on. There this, is the this option. This vote from the districts is a com community vote at, at a ballot? Uh, is that a board of selectmen vote? So it would be a board town of town council. Yep. So it would be a board of selectmen vote. It would be based on di which you know your community would be the board of selectmen vote. Um, there are other communities such as Saugus that would have a town meeting. Revere would have a city council vote. So it would vary from town to town on that. Um, if it was not a, if we did get a no vote and it wasn't unanimous, we do have the option like um, other schools have recently where we could have a ballot vote within all 12 communities and that would go directly uh, to the residents. And you said that, I heard you say 3%, and is that the current enrollment? Yep. Of the total for North Reading? Right, so that would be based on um, North Reading's current enrollment. So unlike the regular budget, it would be based on your enrollment, not your ability to pay. So if the if it was a $100 million project outside of the state reimbursement, our cost would be $3 million. Right. Any other questions? Do, and, but I would say it would be over, we would then break it down over 30 years. We would have a bond <coughs> issue for that. We wouldn't ask for $3 million up front. Appreciate that. What's that? Appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, that, uh, uh, do you have a question, Michael? I do, but I'll wait. Well, that brings up another question. So is it that the Volk School goes out and bonds for the project and then assesses the communities their portion of the bonding? Correct. Is that how that works? Yep. And again, that will fluctuate annually based upon the enrollment. So no, does it, no it, would be at, year? it would be at the time right. of the, um, the first year. When, when the school's so slated to be steady, built. Yeah, steady for the communities at that particular point. Yep. Right. And again, as far as our enrollment, we've been pretty steady between two and a yeah. half, three percent. Yep. Like forever, right? Exactly, yeah, so exactly. So as far as when you're saying our exposure, our right. obligation would be around three percent, that's been very consistent. Right. You know, I would say that if, if we aren't approved, and a, a big piece was, you know, the expenses for future capital costs is going to increase dramatically. So we've had a lot of major projects that we've held off uh, because we won't get the 72% reimbursement if we don't build. So, you know, if we're looking for a, a new roof um, within the next five years, a new boiler within the next five to ten years, um, we won't get that 72% reimbursement. In, it could be more costly for the cities and towns going forward to not um, have this project in, uh, approved. So, 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 for instance, so a new roof on the on the school. Uh, in order for you to, to do that and move forward, is that considered more of a maintenance rather than subject to twelve communities saying, "Yeah, put a new roof on"? I mean, it would it would be part of the um, the operating budget, so we'd have to improve that as a capital expense as part of the operating budget, or we could come to the communities for a bond issue as well. But once again, we would need a unanimous vote on that. So therefore, most of the maintenance and upkeep and repairs, and even some major repairs that have taken place over the last few years, have been done through your operating budget rather than going to twelve communities and asking. Correct. Permission. Uh, correct, and I think. Um, there lies the fluctuation in uh, whether it was right or wrong. People. I think, like most of the infrastructure situations in this country, I think we've held off till they're about to go, uh, and you know they're about to go, and so we'll have no choice anymore. Whereas in the past, gee, maybe we can get a couple of years out of the roof. Maybe we can get a couple of years out of the boil. Um, th they're at the end of their lifespan. 
Where are you with making this presentation to all the members of the community, all the member communities? Well, uh, you know, our hope was that we would be accepted into the MSBA and that I'd have a, a, a traveling tour that would be going on right now. Um, but since we were put back at least another year before possibly being accepted again, this is something that as um, we, we submit our budget to the towns and we, we go to the local finance boards to present that, that it would be a discussion that we would have at that point. Um, I have put it out to most of our town, cities and towns, formally and, and informally, that I'd love to come by and talk to anybody who'd like to discuss the project, uh, whether it be a town administrator, a finance board, a council. Um, you know, we, we, we're trying to be uh, as transparent as possible. We're trying to give people as much time as possible to absorb this project and why it's important. And. Um, so uh, I guess I'll have a lot more of these meetings in the next few months. <laughs> what do you anticipate the uh, best guesstimate at this point? Excuse me. The best guesstimate as far as the uh, cost of the new facility? Yeah, it, you know, it's anywhere between 150 and 200 million. Um, Which makes us feel better about our project. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got two schools, so uh, 123. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because as you know, the increase on the, the price tags of these projects is growing rapidly per year, to say the least. So uh, to hold back five years on this project, not only would we risk not having that reimbursement rate, but we would risk the price tag to be, you know, as much as 10 to 15 percent higher than it is today. Okay, Michael's got a question. Thanks. Oh, sorry, Michael. So, I'm a massive fan of Northeast Folk. I grew up in Wakefield. Completely believe in the system. I think you guys provide such great value for all the communities in the Commonwealth. These kids graduate and they provide a great service. But I will tell you I have one major concern that probably would make me vote against this. And that is the involvement of Durham where you're involved in anything to do with schools. I hope, I just want to be clear with you on this. Okay, because we are here today dealing with our schools, we're still dealing with our schools at a, at a rate that I still believe deep in my heart that it, we had the wrong architect for our schools. So um, I just, I know that you're doing your feasibility sure. study, but when you go and actually do your designs, I hope you would reconsider that because when I hear the, you know, 150 million, I have 200 million, I don't believe any of it if I hear the word dorm, where you right. attached to it. Right. And so, I say that publicly. No, so. and I appreciate, I, you know, it's... I'm not going to say it's ironic, but I would like to stop by saying we, we brought in Dora and Whittier based on recommendations from North Reading before there were issues. So we actually toured North Reading before it was built, and, and they did at that point um, recommend Dora and Whittier. Um, secondly, uh, when, if and when, um, we are accepted into the MSBA, um, the MSBA will choose which architect um, that we would use, and it would be, I think they're using about 12 different firms right now. So the odds are that we would get any one individual firm would be below 10%. Um, but I do appreciate that, and um, Just I want to take that, that under advisement, absolutely. Mr. Ewell. Yes, do you have a choice uh, in the architect when MSBA uh, makes a uh, selection? No. No. So MSBA has told us that they would make the decision on an architect. Um, they would base that on, number one, availability, whereas some, they know some of the art architects um, are spread thin, and um, they try to share the projects amongst um, you know, the different pro schools and communities. So I wouldn't be surprised if they allowed me to voice an opinion on who I liked, but when we met with the MSBA, they said that we would not choose the architects, that they would choose the architects. I know it's a little premature, but could you tell me how a building committee is set up based on the fact that you're, you know, a regional school, basically. Sure. In fact, it's um, right next to me is the co-chair of the building <laughs> committee, uh, Mrs. Diamond. So it it starts 
through the appointment of the chair of the school committee. Um, and then we worked, um, you know, with, with the architects on who would best be suited to be on our committee. So when we met as part of the pre-feasibility, um, it was important that we brought community members. Um, we did put it out to town managers. We had town managers. We have Steve Mayo from Wakefield who sat on that. We asked business owners, um, local business owners, um, to also be on the board as well as um, form, former administration, current teachers, students. So we, we did try to come up with a diverse group of board members. Well, as I recall on our project, the, the MSBA had a specific list of people or skills that needed to be appointed to the committee. So are you working yeah. to a guideline from MSBA? Well, once again, our, we did a pre-feasibility study that was um, funded through our operational budget. So we weren't under any guidelines okay. from the MSBA. You will be. I hope. You will be. <laughs> yeah, you will I, be. That's I a hope. good answer. Yeah. yeah. We hope. <laughs> any other questions? Just comment, Mr. O'Leary. Just to echo uh, Mr. Prisco's comments in relation to uh, you know the school, the district, uh, the service you provide, the education you provide to our, our youth, and uh, and the end products that we get are terrific. I mean, the you know, school systems that have done a great job, and we've got good bang for our buck uh, up to this point, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, great uh, return. And I think it's uh, important that I think it's important that you're here tonight, and you were at the school committee meeting uh, last week to. You know, express your needs and um, the importance, and I think it's up to us as local officials to uh, either embrace or not embrace it, but I'm certainly embracing uh, the concept of vocational education, the role that it plays, uh, the role that it needs to play going forward, which is greater, and I think it's important for us to continue to invest in, in the district. Uh, you know, so you know, I look forward to uh, partnering, partnering with you uh, to educate the public, to be supportive of the needs, and again, from now, a threading standpoint, again, it's such a small percentage uh, of the investment that needs to be made. Uh, I think it would be wise for us to, to again become engaged, become active in it, so that uh, we can get better educated as to uh, you know, what the project's going to be, what the scope is, and again, what the ultimate costs are going to be. But you know, three percent uh, of an investment over 30 years to pay for it to have our students uh, go to a first-class facility is is very important. So uh, I look forward to you know, working with you and supporting the effort. Uh, but in relation to Mr. Crystal's other comments, uh, we have a beautifully designed school. Uh, we have a difference of opinion as to what the initial cost was supposed to be uh, with the architect, and you know, we're, we're still working that out. But the school that we have, the facility we have, is again first class, um, award winning, and uh, it's a beautiful design, and uh, we're very happy with that. Uh, so. Yeah, we were actually invited um, to see the school after it was first completed, and we were very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very jealous. It, it, it's a beautiful school, something to be very proud of. And uh, we believe, the school committee at Northeast believes, that the vocational school students deserve the same type of facility. They have 33, the 300 students on a waiting list that can't get into a vocational school. It's not what we want. It's, 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 it's not successful for anyone to have that kind of a waiting list. And it's because our school is, is too small. Uh, we also, you know, strive to be up to date with everything because the, the, the workforce benefits by a, a student that's up to date. We did have a very successful legislative breakfast uh, not too long ago, we had um, great community uh, turnout. We also had the Speaker of the House there that so strongly supports where we're going um, with the new school. Brad Jones did attend that meeting and we were very happy about that. We had mayors and uh, town administrators from other, uh, the other 12 uh, communities there. Um, we feel that the committees in each town needs to be more involved. People need to show up when we have meetings. It's very disappointing uh, for somebody like myself, a school committee member, that doesn't see the kind of turnout that other communities have. I appreciate your interest, and we will come to any meeting and be uh, uh, available at any time. But I am asking that the commu uh, committees here in town also make an effort to come to things when we have them at the school. 
So I'm sorry you missed that because it was it, it was well done. We and and it, it, it wasn't there no. <coughs> no, that was um, Dave gave the credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> but M Mike was nice enough last week to come to a very important meeting that yes. we called some of the town administrators in for, and he was and only one of four that came, and we really appreciate that. Thank you. you know, so when you see numbers like that, you have these meetings, and you see numbers of, of committees that, and, and uh, elected officials that don't show up. That's very disappointing, yet they all want us to be available, and we will be. But we do need the support of the communities. And I know we'll get that here in North Reading because North Reading supports uh, education and, and, um, and we're very involved in, uh, in fact, we just had a conversation with somebody else about taking on a project here in North Reading because we know you're looking to put bathrooms in a concession stand at the high school. That's something that, that we would like to and hope to be able to get involved in. We just uh, completed quite a task at the Little League field we, we, we did uh, the stands and the, um, the concession stands, the dugouts, and worked very hard on that. And the kids took great pride in that because a lot of the kids working up there on that played at that field. So we do try to, to work hard and pay back in the communities, and, and we hope to continue to do that. And with the new school and better facilities, we'll be able to help a lot more. <laughs> very good. Michael. Is there, a, I guess, you know, for educational purpose for me, I, I don't know about any of these events, so I don't know if it's on me that I'm not looking in the right spots or if the communication isn't coming this way. So what's the best way for us to know what's going on well, and what you want us to participate who in? Would, who were the invitations sent to, uh, Mr. DeVere? Well, everything will go to the um, to town, town administrator's administrator. office and will, is posted um, on your, your board. So Gen Generally, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Just related to that, do you, Mr. Chairman? I know you generally have an important budget event that comes in the early spring. Is it still the plan to have that event? Yeah. It's usually a preview of your budget, so I mean, yeah. we can certainly do our best to encourage attendance at that event to make sure that members of the Select Board and Finance Committee are there as well. I am the liaison, and, and generally, <coughs> when I need to hear something, Judy's not shy. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> And I have your cell phone. Yeah, number. I guess you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that we're disappointed, but we just we just feel that there needs to be involvement on both parts uh, moving forward. We hope to, to be able to see that. Okay, do we have any other questions? Uh, if not, I'd like to move our meeting along. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you so much. And uh, look forward to hearing more about You're your well. project Any this time. time Thanks. Thank you. We'll hold off on the minutes until we get this squared yeah, away. So the next item on our agenda is the uh, proclamation for uh, National Night Off. And I think Rita Mullen is here to uh, tell us a little bit about it. Rita, if you get up to a microphone. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Yeah, I'm representing the community impact team. Uh, Amy couldn't be available tonight. so. Uh, the third annual North Reading Night Off will be this Tuesday, this Tuesday, Tuesday, March 14th, from 5 o'clock. We're asking all through the TA, we're asking him to alert all the boards in town to please try to stay away from scheduling meetings that night. And what the National Night Off, uh, National Night Off is, it's an evening from five o'clock on where we really try not to schedule anything in the schools, uh, in town government, and the schools have all asked their principals, they can only ask them, they can't tell them not to have homework, but they've asked them not to have homework, try not to do practices and things, and let all the students go home at five. So, I mean, it's pretty sad in this day and age that we have to pick one day out of a year that the families can all get together and not have things planned, um, you know, to conflict with school and town government. So. Uh, we do ask also, uh, which means recreation through the leagues, we're asking them not to have practice. The night, we've tried to pick a time like March 14th that doesn't conflict with 
games and things going on at the school. So we also go back to uh, the recreation teams, uh, Little League softball, not to have practices that night and let them have some good family time at home. Uh, our culture doesn't allow for, I, I hate to say it, for any families to have a night off, they sit together and have dinner or be able to go out to dinner. But uh, this is something that we've actually planned. It's been very effective the past uh, two years. We've had very good um, input from people that they are very, very happy that nothing's planned, that the kids are home and like I said, whether they go out and have dinner, we have restaurants that are also working with us to, you know, have either to-go meals or if the family wants to go out to dinner and uh, the parents not have to do any cooking and the kids sit down with their family and go out to a restaurant and have dinner. There are a lot of restaurants that will be advertising who they are that are going to put certain specials out to save the time, you know, the families some money, but come out and have dinner or have something to go. So <coughs> I appreciate the support of uh, Mr. Gilberto to uh, notify all the leagues and uh, all the parents that are excited about this and the school and their administration for hopefully having very little to no homework done. So thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it. Mr. Yule, do you have a motion? Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, I move to proclaim Tuesday, March 14th, 2017 to be North Reading night off and to read the proclamation. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. On the motion, all well, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? And I Mr. will read Yule. the proclamation on behalf of the Chairman. Uh, Whereas the North Reading Community Impact Team works to identify factors that have a negative impact on the quality of life for all community members, from our young children to our senior citizens, and to implement solutions that solve the underlying problems. Whereas the North Reading Community Impact Team is a partnership between the North Reading Police Department, Youth Services, Elder Services, School Department, Parks and Recreation, Fire Department, and the Board of Selectmen. Whereas the North Reading, uh, sorry, whereas North Reading is a busy, thriving town, but community impact team surveys show that time management and stress are a key factor impacting North Reading families. Whereas studies show that children and teens in families who eat dinner together frequently have lower incidence of drug and alcohol abuse. And it is the goal of the North Reading community impact team to support healthy relationships and strong communications within families. So now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of North Reading, Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim March 14th, 2017 to be North Reading Night Off. We urge all town departments, committees, community organizations, sports leagues, and businesses with regularly scheduled events for students, families, to suspend all activities beginning at 5 p.m on March 14, 2017, so that all North Reading family, families, young and old, can unplug and slow down to spend the important time together, enjoy a meal, conversation, and unpressured family time. Be signed by Robert J. Masiri, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is uh, public comment. Anyone here for public comment? Moving right you know along. What? I'd like to say something. I'm sorry. Bob's still there? No, I'm all set. No, Bob, oh. I'd like to say something, if that's okay. Oh, you want to say something. Yeah, yeah, it was me. <laughs> um, the other day, uh, my phone just went off, and it kind of reminded me of something that happened to me the other day, and I think it's you know, with people hopefully watching at this point, uh, more apt to hear uh, of my experience. I don't use telephone banking. I try to stay away from it. Uh, you mean like that? <laughs> just, just like that, okay. But I got I like a, my home, so. I got, I got a text uh, uh, from supposedly Bank of America that my um, card had been locked and that I should respond to, to the, to this text, um, so I, I don't use uh, mobile banking. So 
I just checked it out a little bit further, and, and, and I say to people, I'm going to say to people, that one of the things to check for, even though it may have your bank's name on there, it'll say bankofamerica.com, but then if you follow the, t the trail of that, that email, if it ends in Gmail or something like that, you know it's not from the bank. Okay? If it ends in bankofamerica.com, then it, it, that's, that's the key. But if it's somewhere in the middle uh, and it ends with a Gmail or something like that, it's not from Bank of America or your bank. Uh, it's very, it's very concerned. I did call up the bank and I did address uh, uh, the issue with them. The, the frightening thing about this is that it can catch you off guard because it automatically, once you, once you link into it, it will automatically move you on to another section and ask you for your social security and your bank account number. And I knew that right away that that was way off. So I'm sharing this with everybody because I, who's ever listening, uh, and if you get a chance to put it in the paper, something like this, it's important uh, for people who use this to be careful and be aware of um, phishing, as they call it. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, the next item on our agenda is a vote to call a special town meeting. Mr. Gillibrand. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as, should, uh, as was reflected in the agenda notes, we've worked with the school administration relative to the availability of the Performing Arts Center in the uh, high school and have identified two potential dates in response to the board's request to present uh, an option for a Saturday special town meeting. And uh, the dates would be Saturday, March 11th, or Monday, March 13th. Um, the school, school superintendent has indicated that uh, the previously scheduled school committee budget meeting could be rescheduled to another night in order to allow for a uh, special town meeting to take place on that Monday evening. Um, so tonight we're asking the board to vote to call for the town meeting and the, to identify the date and time <coughs> for the town meeting. Um, at the February 6th meeting, we expect to ask the board to sign the warrant so that we can have it mailed to each home uh, in time for, uh, for the beginning of the town meeting uh, two weeks before it. Mike, can we talk briefly about what the primary reason for the special town meeting is? Certainly. So the first reason for the town meeting, uh, as was discussed at the January 3rd selectmen's meeting, is that uh, with the selection of Pulte Homes as the most advantageous response for the reuse of the Berry property, there is an associated uh, zoning bylaw amendment that uh, uh, would be required to be approved in order for that development uh, by Pulte Homes to proceed. So the town planner and the planning commission are in the process of developing a zoning bylaw amendment uh, that would be submitted to the board to be placed on that warrant for town meeting to uh, be asked to approve at the special town meeting. Uh, the board's also had some discussion relative to a uh, um, potentially asking the special town meeting to take up the construction of the restroom facilities at Arthur Kenny Field as well. So that's a second uh, article that may, uh, may appear on the warrant as well. <coughs> Board discussion regarding the dates, Mr. Prisco. So since our last meeting, <clears throat> I tried to do some surveying around town. Uh, I, I went on social media and posted a few, posted a question about it, and not only about special town meeting, but really about town meetings in general. So I'll hold off on the town meeting in general and we just talk about special town meeting for tonight. And based on the feedback that I received, I think it was overwhelming that people would like, would suggest it, keep it until a Monday evening. Just because the weekends where people are so busy, Monday through Friday, where it only being you know, a few weeks away, keep it on a Monday evening because we have to remember it's a special town meeting, so we need to have a quorum. We need to have 150 people, I believe, is the number, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Thomas. <coughs> um, that sounds correct. Yeah, absolutely. And based on the feedback and folks that are around town that have been uh, very active and the ones that do participate in it felt that we'd have our best luck doing it on a Monday evening so people can get out of work and go directly to the high school and 
doing it on the weekends, they don't feel that they would give 150 people with this short notice between now and March 13th or would be March 11th if it was a Saturday. Uh, to get the right participation to have 150 people with all the sports activities going on, the commitments these kids have made and the parents have made for the weekend's activities. So that's, I just share that. So I'd be more in favor of a Monday special town meeting. Mr. Yes. Um, first of all, the, the primary reason that I was suggesting that we have the meeting on a Saturday uh, versus a Monday evening was to have it on a Saturday, not a Saturday evening. I noticed that the time here is still 7 p.m. So having it on a Saturday at 7 p.m. would serve no purpose for seniors uh, that don't drive at night. So it wouldn't, wouldn't help them, whether it was on a Saturday night or a Monday. So what I was referring to uh, for having a Saturday special town meeting uh, it would be um, uh, uh, to occur during the daytime. Uh, and I would, like they do in other communities, they usually start around 9 a.m. Um, uh, and start their meetings and, um, and proceed from that point on. Again, this, my primary purpose is to add to the attendance of the meetings by giving seniors the opportunity to attend. Now, we know, and I, we with Mike, I mean, the, the special town meeting, we need 150 people. It doesn't seem to matter on Monday nights when we have a special town meeting, we need 150 people. We do have to call people to attend anyway. And they don't have any sports activities, so they don't have activity. You know, I have to assume that Monday night was initially chosen as the night that people have nothing else to do in their life and hopefully they would come to a town meeting. That would be more uh, dancing with the stars. Like that, though, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but then, you know, but then, then came Monday Night Football, and now, as you say, dancing with the stars. So that gets in the way. But uh, there's, so there's always uh, excuses or reasons uh, why people won't come on one day, you know, versus another day. My point is opportunity. And this is a big decision for the community. And it needs to incorporate everyone to have, a, to have a potential say on what they feel the decision should be made, whether it be on the bathrooms or whether it be on uh, the recommendation by EDC. So I will not be in support of an evening meeting at all, whether it's Saturday or on a Monday. I think it needs to be on a Saturday, and I think we need to make it open to um, the entire community. If someone has a, uh, uh, an event to do that day, well, they may have an event to do that Monday night. It's a crapshoot. We don't know how it's going to turn out for any individual. But to exclude seniors outright, not giving them a choice of coming to the meeting or not, it would be unfair to them. So I strongly recommend that we have a Saturday meeting that starts at 9 o'clock in the morning that uh, can uh, be open to the entire community. So that's that's. If, nice if, I, if I may comment, Jeff, first of all, when we were putting together a time on Saturday, my assumption's always been it's been a Saturday morning. Yeah. Maybe not quite as early as 8 o'clock. No. Why is 8? Oh, I thought you said 8. I'm I said sorry. 9. But <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you said 8. Well, you know, actually, when you think about it, I don't mean to uh, uh, intercede, but um, when you think about it, getting it over with in the morning is a lot easier for, for, the, for the general public than it is to have it in the middle of the day because then people are already out gallivanting, doing what they want to do. So I apologize for it. All right, so uh, the town administrator is going ahead. And uh, Michael, you weren't thinking about Saturday night, were no, you? No, I, I think that's just an oversight of the motion that was prepared. That's all. Okay. But Mr. Yule, is in conversation with me, indicated that his preference was for a, a, a morning a morning start time. Yeah, I would think 9 o'clock or something like that yeah. would be more than adequate. All right, so we have, an, uh, we have two dates that uh, are available, and we know basically what the reason for the meetings are. And we've discussed that over the past few weeks. So 
we need just need to come to a consensus as to whether we should have it on the Saturday morning or the uh, Monday evening. Uh, Michael sure. makes the case seems to represent more of the younger crowd in town, and uh, Jeff is making a case for the elders that may have difficulty getting in the evening. So, Michael, if I I, I may be incorrect in terms no, no, of who you talked to. I'm not so sure I'd say it's the younger crowd, but nonetheless, based on the feedback, I'm just sharing the feedback, and based on that, that's how I'm positioning my decision. But when we talk about town meeting, I'm not, I, I'm in agreement with Mr. York, and maybe we should make a serious consideration about changing both town meetings, or at least one of them, to a Saturday so our senior community can participate more actively. And that's a subject we have to address at a different meeting. Tonight is about a special town meeting where it's special and where it's only, you know, March 11th, a little less than a month away. Based on the feedback, making plans, things have already been scheduled. Those weekend schedules have already been placed for basketball games and hockey games and all the other sports that go along with it. So it's, it's challenging. But if we make a decision as a board and we go through the home rule petition and we make that legislation change or that charter change, then it's it's sort of in advance. People can plan around it. So, you know, games can be scheduled based on our decisions. Where this is only a few weeks away, I'm suggesting we leave it on a Monday and let the chips fall where they may. But if the will of the board is to do it on a Saturday, if that's where the majority wants to go, then I will support that. Absolutely. I'm just sharing feedback. Uh, at this point in time, I'm inclined to st uh, stay with the Monday night. But I think we should, uh, and again, I'm, I'm only aware, I think Wilmington is the only community that I'm aware of that has a Saturday town Same. meeting, and they've been doing it for a number of years, and they sometimes, I mean, they start in the morning, I think late, mid to late morning, and it, depending upon their business, I mean, they have a bean supper at 5 o'clock, you know, uh, to coincide oh. with it. But, I mean, so the day, you know, you, you're talking about, you know, a whole Saturday in some instances. So, you know, as far as looking down the road, I think we need just survey what if there are what other communities have Saturdays. I think I'm not I'm not, I'm not familiar with any other ones other than Wilmington, and I'm not really sure um, whether they have a quorum requirement or not. But you know, I, I'm in favor of taking a look at it going forward. But I, I think at this particular juncture, I think uh, from the time frame standpoint, I think uh, Monday night on this particular special. And. <coughs> You know, I understand what Jeff is coming from. Uh, I, I, I think at this point we should just continue with the Monday night, get the special town meeting over. If we want to make some more significant changes in our regular town meetings, it's a two-step process. We can put an article in the June town meeting to ask the legislature to modify our charter to set the dates or times differently. That's if the board Watch wants to do it or if the community wants to do right. it. Right. Yeah. So with that, uh, Jeff has a Yes, Mr. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> in answer, in response to uh, Steve, I think in New England it's done quite a bit, I mean, whether it's done locally yeah, I, that I much. It, it, it's done quite a bit. I know uh, it's done a lot of many, many Vermont towns, uh, some New Hampshire towns and, and so in Maine and so on. Uh, so there's a, a good number that, that, that do it. Um, and yeah, it could it could take a long time, and, and and I understand that. But you know, we've been able to do our meetings within a three to four hour bracket uh, most often. Um, but I, I just I, f I feel extremely uh, uh, strong strongly about about this issue because um, it's a you know both of these issues the the bathrooms and the uh, uh, recommendation by the EDC uh, have such a uh, will have such a big impact on the purse of uh, of, uh, of seniors, and for us not to give them consideration um, in the thought process, uh, they you know seniors have come forward many times on behalf of the schools and so on uh, and stepped forward, but. Um, uh, and they probably would do so here, but um, I just don't see how we can, on a crucial item that's going to develop this town, send it forward uh, with the EDC proposal and the issues surrounding the bathroom, 
uh, the bathrooms for the schools. Uh, and I guess there's, I assume the snack shack, when I mean, we keep talking about the bathrooms, but I assume there's a snack shack uh, thrown into that as well. Um, uh, to put things like that onto the uh, purse of the seniors and not give them a say, I think is a, is a, a big mistake by the board not to do so. Okay, so I, I think it's a consensus of the board to go with the Monday night, if I'm not mistaken, so I'll have to take a motion. That would be the 13th? Yep. Is that correct? Yes. 313, correct? March 13th? Yes. Correct. Yeah, the regular time is 7. At 7 p.m., right. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move to call a special town meeting for March 13th, 2017 at 7 p.m., at North Reading High School. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Uh, motion carries on a three to one vote. Three to one, one. One board member absent. Okay, we have legal bills for November. Steal you whenever you ready. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for November 2016 in the amount of eleven thousand one hundred and forty two dollars and eighty eight cents. Coppelman and Page PC General six thousand eight hundred and eighty seven dollars and 88 cents, couple, mi couple men and page, PC labor, $4,255 for a grand total of $11,142.88. Second. Chairman, Mr. O'Leary, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, next item on our agenda. We'll, we'll cover the uh, minutes at the end. Yeah. Uh, medical and recreational marijuana discussion. It's a continuation of, uh, and I see that the proponents uh, also town are council. also here. And town, town council, council is here? here. Yes. yes. So are we taking this in any order? Uh, yeah, I'd like to hear from, uh, from Attorney Eichmann first, if uh, okay. that's right, Mr. Chairman. The idea was just to have him to be here to maybe speak a little bit to the recreational marijuana law at least as it currently stands, as approved, uh, and uh, more recently, uh, I won't say, maybe not modified, but was delayed by the legislature. Uh, attorney Eichmann is uh, one of the uh, attorneys who's uh, most familiar with it at KP Law, and uh, I've asked him to come here just to brief the board uh, as to the recreational law, provide uh, options that the, the board might wish to consider if it were uh, interested in trying to pursue some sort of regulation uh, of recreational marijuana to the extent that it can now um, and then again of course to add, answer any questions that the board might have <coughs> excuse me thank you you have the floor mr. chairman board members can you all hear me yep. I'm not used to this microphone uh, first off of course you're familiar with the initiative petition being enacted it went into effect December 15th it is now in effect in Massachusetts um, it provides in essence for the licensing of establishments to sell marijuana for recreational use in the state. Uh, it requires that a state commission be established under the Office of the Treasurer to adopt regulations and thereafter to license establishments to sell marijuana, to cultivate marijuana for recreational use in the state. Um, to this point, uh, the commission has not been appointed uh, Obviously, regulations have not been adopted. No licenses have been, applications have been submitted. Uh, the legislature recently enacted a bill to extend the time periods in that initiative petition six months to give the state more time to adopt the regulations and to meet the deadlines that are established in that petition for certain actions to take place, most specifically the adoption of the regulations and thereafter the licensing. Um, primarily, the, the intent of the act is to regulate marijuana for recreational use 
in a manner similar to the regulation of alcohol in the state, and that's one of the reasons it's placed under the treasurer. Uh, localities, municipalities are given a certain amount of local control over this. Uh, they will not be involved, at least as I read the regulations now, or the act now, not be involved in the licensing, but it does provide for municipalities to adopt bylaws and regulations relative to marijuana. Um, the assumption being that they would be bylaws and regulations that do not conflict with the petition or with regulations adopted by the state. Um, you, you're somewhat familiar with this process from the Medical Marijuana Act that was passed. This town did adopt uh, a zoning bylaw to regulate medical marijuana establishments. Of course, we have an applicant behind us here um, seeking to locate a medical marijuana establishment in the town. Um, they will have to apply for a permit, whatever approvals are needed under that local zoning bylaw. For recreational marijuana, we have no bylaws in place. Um, I think the key thing for the board to understand, and I can point out, by the way, we have provided to the town administrator uh, a sort of summary of the recreational marijuana uh, initiative petition. Um, and I should, hopefully everyone has got a copy of this. I believe it was in two meeting packets ago in correspondence, okay. but the board should have seen it. It's, it's a good summary. I will point out that the dates have to be updated because since we issued it, the legislature moved them up six months, or moved them back six months. Uh, the other document that I just want to point out before I talk a little bit more about local regulation is a letter that was issued um, by the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security directed to Colonel Richard McKeon of the Massachusetts State Police. Um, and it specifically offers the state's guidance about the, the effect of the passage of the initiative petition on the enforcement of laws in Massachusetts relative to the possession uh, of marijuana. Um, if I can provide a copy of this, if the town doesn't already have it, I'd be happy to. It's something that probably everyone should be familiar with. It's a good summary of the, certainly of the criminal side of this. I believe that the police chief has it, but we'll certainly take a copy. Thank you. Okay, good. So, as far as the local control uh, goes, um, it basically says the city of town may adopt ordinances and bylaws that oppose reasonable safeguards on the operation of marijuana establishments. Then it says, provided they are not unreasonably impracticable and are not in conflict with this chapter. Um, in this section, however, it does, in our opinion, allow towns to prohibit entirely um, the establishment of medical, or excuse me, recreational marijuana establishments in the town. As best we can determine from the petition now, that will require a vote of the town at an election. Um, there is some confusing language about the fact that a bylaw has to be enacted by the voters of the town. Um, we are interpreting this essentially with caution at this point. We expect the legislature to clarify this, although we can't say for certain that will happen. Um, but we are advising towns as a policy matter at this point to, when you consider how you want to approach recreational marijuana to look very quickly, if not initially, at whether you want to pursue attempting to prohibit marijuana, recreational marijuana sales entirely in the town. Um, that if you want to go that route, um, and if that was turned out to be successful, you could avoid some of the other more difficult questions about what would happen if that is not the case in the town. There are some uh, guidelines in the act about when certain things will happen in the town, um, certain deadlines that um, will take effect, obviously, if the town does not prohibit uh, medical uh, recreational marijuana. Um, at this point, we do recommend, however, that because of the confusing language of the petition, the town, if it wants to consider prohibiting recreational marijuana, that it do so both by adopting a bylaw at town meeting. At this point, it appears that a general bylaw would suffice. That, again, is not entirely clear. The Attorney General may have other ideas about that. I think we will get guidance on that fairly shortly. We know towns that are pursuing this in the next month or two. Um, and also, uh, placing the question 
on the uh, the next town election. Um, that would be uh, the path we would recommend for a prohibition. If that is not the direction the town wants to go, uh, regulate the town can regulate by bylaw um, the sale, um, cultivation, and all other aspects of recreational marijuana, again, to the extent it doesn't conflict with state regulation, which we don't know what that is yet. Some towns are considering uh, a temporary moratorium as a zoning bylaw on recreational marijuana establishments. Um, the, I know one that's coming to a vote in, um, in March. Most towns seem to be looking to do these if they're going to do them at all in their annual town meetings in the spring. The period of time we recommend is one year. I know towns that are asking for a little bit more time. Uh, the reason that some towns are looking for more time is that at this point, the state is required to adopt regulations by, I believe, July 1st of 2018. Um, if you have a moratorium for a year from a spring town meeting, you're obviously going to have to adopt regulations at the end of the moratorium if that's the way you're going for the state potentially puts out its regulations. Many towns simply, they want to see what the state does before they finally act on their own local regulations. So I have uh, I've seen towns uh, push that, or at least have a bylaw that they're going to put in front of the voters to push that period out to the fall of 2016, 2018, excuse me. And again, we will hopefully get some direction from the Attorney General on this fairly quickly. Uh, but again, it's something that the town may want to be considering uh, now uh, in preparation for the spring town meeting. Um, Excuse me, my only concern is the timing of it. I mean, our spring town meeting is after our town election, so if it has to go to a ballot question, we're 11 months away from the town meeting action before you can take uh, ballot action on it. Uh, and again, in some instances, I guess I don't mind being a trailblazer. Um, if we were to put something, we just voted for a special town meeting in March, mm -hmm. and again, if the general bylaw or the consensus is to um, prohibit uh, when you say through the general bylaws, not the zoning bylaws. The yes, the referendum doesn't say zoning bylaws; it says by bylaw. So the construction of that would be a general bylaw would be acceptable again. Although we have permitted uses under zoning and non-permitted uses, uh, but but either way, I mean the the language that would be inserted if the inclination of the board or the planning commission were to prohibit recreational. It would be pretty simple and straightforward Correct. as a non-permissible use. Um, theoretically, we could put it on the special town meeting warrant for March and the May ballot for the general populace's consideration mm -hmm. um, and see what, let the chips fall where they may. At some point, I mean, as you say, the Attorney General is going to have to start ruling on some of these. I would imagine there are other communities who are stepping up the pace on it anyway. There are some there, well, no one in particular that's very anxious. Yes. Uh, so do you see any major obstacle as far as any language that would need to be proposed? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It is. I think it will be straightforward. We've already drafted language for a, a referendum question and for a, a, a very simple bylaw. Um, yeah, it's very, I think it would be very simple, very straightforward. Again, given the somewhat vague language in this, it's difficult to tell whether the ballot question should be in the form of a bylaw or whether it simply just has to be a referendum question. And I think we've gone the route of the, the simpler route of having just a simple question, yes or no, on a prohibition. Uh, okay, so, so I, I think we should consider having a, an article in the uh, special town meeting warrant, simple up or down for people to consider, and then based on that vote, we'll determine whether or not we'll have a ballot question. Well, we can do both anyway. <laughs> Yes, um, no, I think we did raise the hand. Why don't you let me go first? You go right ahead. Well, let's continue with the board. First. Okay, okay. Uh, so now we're adding a third item, uh, a third warrant onto the town meeting. And, and I'm sorry, but I have to go back. Now we have it still in the evening, and we're excluding a significant, this impacts a significant portion of our community. And they're, they're out of the equation. And I don't disagree that we should, you know, answer this 
uh, deal with this as soon as possible. But I do disagree that we're making three important decisions and we're excluding a specific segment of the community from participating. So I have a big, big problem with all this. Okay, well you made your point. Uh. So, I mean, so that, so again, my question, I guess, my point to the uh, town council was it seems to be pretty straightforward, simple language, uh, not an awful lot to consider. Either for it or get it. Uh, so, why not move forward for the uh, public to help us and assist us early on in this process? And again, the legislature, we don't know what they're going to do with it and how much they're going to take it with it. Uh, but at least an action by the town of North Reading through their town meeting and their ballot will send a message to our and Again, I don't know how quickly they're going to be considering this either. Uh, they've given themselves plenty of time to, to think about it and contemplate, and generally they take it. So uh, we may as well send them a, a message one way or the other. The communities have already voted once on the medical, I mean on the uh, recreational marijuana. And if you look at the community vote here in North Reading, we voted against it. But none of that counts. We have to go through this again. Not yet. Not yes, yet. Yes, you're, you're <laughs> correct, yes. Well, that's something that counts in a, in a legal play. sense. It, you know, in other words, under the petition to prohibit it, yeah, you have to have a, set, a, a new vote. You can't rely on the, the vote on the initiative petition. But to, and again, there's discussion as far as legislatively maybe uh, contemplating some sort of uh, local action uh, involving how the community voted. It's uh, giving the opportunity of a licensing authority such as this board uh, to opt to reflect the wishes of the community at the time but of the vote. But we don't we know. Do, we do have a special town meeting scheduled for other purposes, adding another article might bring more people, might get us to the quorum yeah, that we need. <laughs> uh, so there's some advantage to that. And uh, yes, the, so the legislature could make a change such that whatever action we've taken is blown away. But shame on us if we don't take this opportunity to do something. And, and I'm thinking about the timing in relation to our, our annual town election too. Right. Otherwise, no, otherwise we're a year right. and a half away from getting a final determination from the community. Oh, we have to have a special election. Which yeah, we're looking silly. forward to. <laughs> okay, any other questions Michael for the had, attorney? Uh, Michael, had, Michael had a question. Michael. Well, I don't particularly have any for the attorney, but I appreciate the hard work, and, you know, I feel a lot more comfortable about the situation that you're talking about. In regards to the timeline, I do want to support the suggestion that's being made here is to take advantage of this, because this topic is actually very active throughout the whole Commonwealth. And, you know, being here now my seventh year, I've learned my lessons. I'd much rather plow a path for our destiny than rather sit around and let someone else decide for us because it doesn't ever seem to work out for us. So in this case, there really is no harm on the town by us taking this active approach. You know, they're going to have the opportunity to come to tell me, they're going to have an opportunity to vote, speak, and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm really in support of doing this. And but I know Mrs. Mullins kind of Actually, for the jumping board. up, so I'll, I'll be quiet. And <laughs> I've said enough. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it just quickly, I, I agree with with what Mike said and what Steve said that we do do need to um, uh, take advantage of the opportunity. I, I agree with that. I, I, as you know, I've already voiced my problem with it being in special town meeting. Reader. I would just be very careful, to be quite honest with you, to, to rush it and have it in March because you could actually, uh, how long do you have to do the town meeting? 18. 18. You could get about a 25% of a high school class that could decide this would be a great time to show up, which is terrific. Yeah. And they well, may hopefully when they're talking around the dinner table, and, and okay, this is the day before the night off. <laughs> so I guess depending on what you want your, your vote to come out to, I don't know that I would rush, to be quite honest with you, and put it on um, the special town meeting. I'd, I'd rather see it go when it's a, you know, a full meeting like you do in July when you've got the town. You know, 25% of high school class could uh, sway your vote. Well, we're talking okay. about two steps here. We're talking yeah. about a right. step for town two meeting steps. and then putting it on the ballot. Yeah, it's a, it's a question that we're voting for. 
what? question on on the ballot is what yeah. we're, we're voting for, not to approve it or not. Okay, so the whole well, yeah. that, so that all depends. So we may be. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm asking you, what, what are you going to be asking the town meeting? My, my suggestion would be yeah, to, to implement a bylaw and then put it to the ballot, if that's what the process calls for. Have town meeting approve the bylaw. And again, if town meeting doesn't approve the bylaw, we can still put it on the ballot and then come back in October and present it again. I mean, we, we've had situations where, you know, town meeting says one thing and the ballot says no. Or conversely, ballot says yes, town meeting says no, you still need town meeting, you need both actions. Uh, so it just provides us with an opportunity. And as far as, you know, 25% of the, the senior class, terrific. I hope they get involved and I hope they get, get active about it. And I think they, you know, when the parents say, where are you going tonight? I'm going to town meeting. How come? Because I'm going to go in and vote in favor of you know, recreational marijuana. It might get some of the parents involved too a little bit more. So I think it's a good thing. It's okay. I'm just questioning the, the judgment was such a short amount of time, to be quite honest with you. I think it might be a short period of time, but I think people will come to a conclusion rather quickly. Well, I guess is people have already formulated an opinion. And it's a question of whether or not they're fearful of what the outcome will be, and they'll come up. So, same thing with the ballot question, so. Okay. Any other questions for our attorney? In relation to recreation? Oh, yeah, yes. I, I, I just wanted a clarification. From the attorney, if you don't mind. If, if we pass at town meeting to have a referendum on a yes or no vote on recreational marijuana, if it goes down, if, if the town votes against that, doesn't that supersede anything that we've done at town meeting? I, in my opinion, it does not. But again, I want to emphasize that the language in this initiative petition is very imprecise about this particular action. So what, in, in advising this two-step approach and recommending this two-step approach, we're doing that to give, basically to take every step we think is available to us under this initiative petition to carry out a prohibition. It may be that the interpretation given this by the legislature, if they see fit to uh, amend this, or to clarify, I should say, or the Attorney General looking at a bylaw that's passed, it may be that the interpretation is, it's a ballot question, that's it. Um, or it may okay. be that it's a town meeting action on a bylaw, that's it. Or it may be a town meeting action on a zoning bylaw. We don't know yet for certain, but basically the two-step approach gives us as much chance at getting it right as this act allows us to basically understand. And if we decide to put an article on the warrant, as long as we can meet the four corners of what <coughs> we decide to do, we can well, put that article, you know, we have right down to the day before the meeting to uh, tweak it as well. Well, you could put an article for a general bylaw and a zoning bylaw yeah. simultaneously, two yeah, articles, right. so you can cover it in both places. And if whatever happens on the first comes one, out prior to the meeting, we can pass modify it accordingly. Pass right. Okay. Uh, I have some questions on, on the medical aspect of things. Okay. Yeah. We'll uh, switch subjects now to medical. If, if everybody's all set with the recreational stuff. Yeah. Uh, now, the medical uh, one, you know, it's my understanding that if someone is approved for a medical license, they are automatically eligible for a recreational license uh, under the recreational. Uh, so they have the, the medical license, they're already qualified and are eligible for a recreational license. Uh, but in relation to this, the, the process that they have to go through, and these people are kind enough to provide us with a lot of information, but we need the verification from you. you know, they come in, they apply to us, um, we, so we opt in and sign some sort of agreement with them and give them the letter that they're looking for. There's still another process that they have to go through for special permitting in the town, which is a little bit of a protracted period of time. It gives us an opportunity to still say yay or nay. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have, they have to satisfy the zoning bylaw. Okay, they Correct. have to satisfy the zoning bylaw, so that would be uh, through special permit? 
I believe that's what it calls for. I have it here. I haven't looked at it, I have to admit, in the last half hour. Okay, but, okay. but it's it through special permit. I, I forget whether the special permitting is, is done through the Board of Selectmen or through <coughs> the uh, <coughs> Planning so Commission. It's a selectman for Take a look right now. A what? For medical marijuana, it's a selectman. It's a selectman, so okay. So, so again, there would have to be another public process, special permitting process that they would have to go through <coughs> um, in order to get. And it is special permit, correct. Okay. Right. So, um, all right, so, so that was, I just wanted to be sure that, again, uh, depending upon what the board decides in the next meeting or two, um, whether to move forward or not, if we decide to move forward, it isn't the fait accompli necessarily, other than we've chosen an applicant to try and do business with us, even come to an agreement with, mm -hmm. but there's still a whole other process they need to go through with us in order to come to agreement. Right, and it's a zoning process, so it's a zoning permit, so that would be subject to the criteria in the zoning bylaw and the discretion of the board under that bylaw. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for our attorney? Rita. Rita. I haven't had the conversation with the police chief today, and we were, one of the questions we were Sorry, kicking around. Sorry, Sarah, I apologize, Rita. I think you're going to have to go to the podium, only because the people at home can't hear you. I just didn't want to get to the sick girl up there. Oh, good. I'm sitting right next to him. No, he's already right been there. told that he's not contagious. <laughs> yeah, go that way. That's good. Did you bring a doctor's note? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a laugh or cough. <laughs> uh, one of the questions that we had is, uh, if we've got the area already designated on Concord Street, could we continue to uh, deny a license for medical marijuana, even though it's legal? The chief and I happen to be talking about this because he wasn't at the last meeting. So the, the law passed that medical marijuana is legal we, uh, North Reading chose a spot on Concord Street. Could we continue to, every time somebody came in, say, um, no, we don't want to approve it? Is, are you in violation of a, a law? If you continue to deny people, can they come back and say, well, at some point you have to say yes because the law is that you have to give it to somebody if they're a qualified person? Mr. Chairman, through you. Yes. Uh, if I understand the question correctly, are you saying that when an applicant for medical marijuana approval letter comes to the Board of Selectmen, can the Board of Selectmen simply say no? Time well, they again? need a letter. This group here or any other Correct. group that comes in needs a letter to say that we're in, what's the word, what's the terminology you're using? Non-opposition. Non-opposition. Correct. Could you continue to say we're opposed? The requirement for a, a letter of non-opposition comes from the Department of Public Health's application process. That's where that requirement lies. Um, right now, our understanding is that that letter is needed to complete the application process with the Department of Public Health. If they don't get that letter, they cannot go forward with the Department of Public Health. That's what we understand. That could change, but at present, that's what we're told. So to answer the question, could North Reading continue to say, we're opposed, we're opposed, we're opposed, uh, and we don't want to give that compliance, you know, that we're we are okay with it? Yeah, if things stay the way they are now, the selectman could say no to every request that comes before them for a letter of non-opposition support. That's what we understand now. That hasn't ever been challenged. But again, that is the way we understand it now. Okay, because it was a two it was a two part question. We discussed it today, and I was going to call you to ask you to call them. But if you know, if the town had could continue to say we're opposed, we're opposed, we're opposed, okay. But if you if the law somebody eventually comes and says you can't do that, then correct. My yeah. the flip side is then that's when I would absolutely vet the groups that are coming in, and found this group to be you know, very, very good. So I just didn't know if there's a way that you are forced, you, you know, the town could continue to say, no, just like you didn't want alcohol in town, we don't want it, we don't want it, we don't want it. But if you have at some point 
push that you have to be able to say, we've got to accept somebody or somebody's going to challenge it. Well, I, I think uh, under the, uh, the law, the, there's a, a minimum number of medical marijuana facilities that, you know, that I think they're trying to get spread out so that patients don't have to travel halfway across the state, right? So, uh, you know, are there enough close enough to us so that we're not going to get that kind of pressure? My understanding is if we say no, it's no. Someone else can come and we can say no until someone changes the law, you know, which can be changed. <laughs> but we have that right at this point. Okay. That being said, if we find a vendor that comes to us with an appropriate proposal that makes sense, we can say, we can issue a letter of non-opposition, which will allow that particular vendor, whoever they are, to go along with the process to get all their approvals and <coughs> then still have to come back to the town to get a permit. Okay. Okay. At least that's my understanding of the process. And I think the, the people that have been making a proposal to us have been pretty clear as to what their understanding of the law is. They've answered a lot of the questions that we had regarding that. Okay. And they're here again tonight to ask questions. Okay, because that's what you said. If, if all the groups that have to get involved in, you know, whether it be you services, the CIT, to take a vote on those things that you want that input at some point, we wonder if we're going to come back. They'll have an opportunity. Every one of those groups would have an opportunity well, to come back. Well, since I was at the meeting and I gathered that uh, from a CIT point of view, and I don't know whether we consider that a formal vote or not, but there was a, it was brought to the attention of the board by uh, our youth services director that the CIT's whole purpose was against drug use, and therefore, uh, if they took a stand in support of it, it would be counter to what the CIT was set up for. At least that's what I thought I heard. Okay. And being a member, uh, I'm not sure I look at it quite the same way, but I think the majority of, I don't know if it was the majority, but well, that's it what I said. I, I think there's a individual. difference. I think there's a difference between recreational and um, medical, marijuana. medical marijuana. So if it came to that, my question was, you know, could you just keep denying it if you want to continue to deny any marijuana in town? But again, the flip side is, uh, I, I if you think, were to, uh, if you, you know, were, I, at some I, point, I, if I you're going to be challenged, I, I wouldn't want to be challenged two years down the road and be forced to pick, take a different vendor than a vendor that we've already looked at that we may have a different feeling you know, positive feeling on that's all. Well, I, the way I look at it, reader, is the medical manner, uh, marijuana, the way it's set up, it's on the very strict rules, regulations, and it's not accessible to everybody who wants marijuana. Recreational is like going into the liquor store and buying right. a bottle of scotch, right? And, you know, and I can clearly understand why the state is extending it to start to put some rules and regulations associated with it. You know, uh, it could almost be like, you know, why not sell it in a liquor store? <laughs> you know, something like that. You know, and uh, although I think there was a 20% uh, of the number of liquor stores in town is the limit. Is that what I heard, something like that? There is a, Mr. Chairman, there's a uh, part of the, uh, the referendum that allows for local regulation in the same section that allows the, um, town to take a, at least do we believe, allow the town to take a ballot question to prohibit, also allows the town, <coughs> apparently also by ballot question, to limit the number of marijuana retailers to fewer than 20% of the number of licenses issued in the town for retail sale of alcoholic beverages. So that's another option for a ballot question, essentially. Okay. Well, well, maybe you need to think about that, too. That's if you had 10, you get Thank two. You. But I've, in my mind, at least, I've separated medical marijuana from recreational. And as the town voted, yes for medical, no for recreational, I think it's relatively easy to separate it. One provides what I consider to be a need for patient suffering, and the other is, well, I come from a generation that uh, was bef before the generation that got into a lot of this stuff. But Thank you.
Any other questions for our attorney? Yeah, you, you're certainly welcome to stay. We have a company that is propo proposing medical marijuana uh, on Concord Street at a facility they have identified. So at least we know where they would put it. It's, uh, it's advantageous uh, for them because it's right off the highway, or pretty much off the highway, and it's advantageous from the town from the point of view that it's not <coughs> the center of a business district. And that was I'd be the site of the board, the district, uh, that kind of operation out on Concord Street. I'd be happy to stay if the board would like me to stay, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, yes. just one maybe point of clarification uh, to Ms. Mullen's question about um, declining a request for non-opposition letter. One of the risks, and I'll put it in quotes because I don't know how big a risk it is that um, we've been made, of, made aware of in this process is that if there isn't a, uh, a medical marijuana dispensary nearby to a, a prospective patient, they may be able to claim to the Department of Public Health a, a need to grow at their own home. And that's something that was provided for under the medical mar marijuana law. We haven't really discussed much of that. I don't know what the standards are that, that are out there. And perhaps the folks from CAS know it better than town council would know it. But that, that is another r risk that could be out there. Um, you know, there could be easily be a, one, you know, a dispensary located in one of the abutting communities, and that may satisfy that, that need. I don't know. But uh, just something else for us to, I think, be aware of is uh, an already provided option under the state law. Do we have any questions for I guess that are proposing a medical marijuana facility? Yeah, I think we can invite them up, maybe. Huh? I think we can invite them up. And yeah, why don't you? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can get another mic over there. Well, yeah, I'll get a mic over there. Well, welcome back. Thank, Thank you for having us. Too. Who do you have with you tonight? Just the two of you? Uh, we're, we're a team. We're a team, okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just have a question based upon information that was provided to us very recently in relation to, um, you know, if you could just reiterate, you know, who the principals are in your operation, and then we've been made aware of uh, some situations in your prior applications in a couple of other <coughs> communities, uh, whereby there was another individual, um, who happens to be Jane's husband, uh, who was actively involved in uh, petitioning other communities, and then there's a question as to whether or not he was qualified by background uh, problems, uh, issues that he had had, and uh, you know, what role, uh, I mean, this was as recently as last March and May, uh, where yeah, Mr. Over, Vining was involved. It was over a year ago. Yeah, and, um, you know, could, could you just clarify that for, uh, okay, for the I'll board? Sp I'll speak to that because he is my husband. <laughs> um, and I apologize for not bringing it forth earlier. I thought this was behind us. But um, I guess it was a year ago or so, my husband um, spoke on my behalf at a town meeting. Um, he is my husband, and it didn't even like dawn on me that um, the person who, who um, is my best friend and whom I trust the most in my life um, when you have nothing to hide, you hide nothing. So he spoke on my behalf at a town meeting. My husband does have um, a background that something that um, happened back in 1987 or 89. I 89. Um, I didn't marry my husband till 2002. Um, we together have um, been humbled in life. Um, he has lost two wives to car accidents, and I've lost two children. Um, although we weren't together during three of these events, he was with me um, when I lost my daughter to a drug addiction. And he has never been, um, he, he's strictly my sole supporter and husband. He's never been an officer, director, or employee of the CAST Foundation ever. Um, we have been 
extremely vetted by the DPH, by the City of Cambridge, whom we've received a letter from and, and a license, and more extremely vetted by the City of Somerville. Um, and we have passed mustard in, in all towns, and the City of um, Fitchburg for our cultivation. So um, I thought this was behind us, but um, apparently it's not. But he isn't, again, I'll repeat, he's not a director, officer, or employee of the foundation. This is strictly my foundation. Um, Bert is his son, but he's gone to law school, so I recruited him to be by my side. He was with me through the hot screening process, and I wanted him to be with me through this process. So um, other than him being my husband, um, he has no role in this endeavor whatsoever, except to support me and uh, egg me on. <laughs> And it we've also been a nonprofit since 2008. We filed returns well before we ever had any intention of applying for medical marijuana, in which this would be a disqualifying event. So going back to 2008, we filed returns every year. He's not currently, nor has he ever been, on any of the records filed with the Secretary of State for the Mass 180 Chapter 180 nonprofit or the 501c3. So. Before we ever could have known to maybe hide him if we needed or wanted to, way back in 2008, he was never a part of it. This was Jane's foundation to give back to her son, that Mark, that died. And then after Julie died, we went to do that uh, towards this initiative, which is the medical marijuana. Um, back at the time when these <coughs> events, when he had spoken, was I had graduated law school in June of 2015. Uh, and I had my son was born uh, last March. The time at which he spoke was I was unavailable. Usually I would be with Jane. I was unavailable to go with her at that time. And I think on the particular event of Bill Ricca when he spoke, she was a little getting choked up when she, every time she starts, she tells the story about how it started. She's talk, she talking about Julie. She got choked up. My dad took the ball and ran with it. He wasn't trying to be an, he was not, nor has he ever been an agent of Cass. Therefore, he was purely being a supporter. He was not doing anything that he shouldn't have. And since then, we've now filed with the DPH. We have a written letter from the DPH addressing this issue, saying as long as he is, continues not to be an agent of the Cass Foundation, they have no problem. Since then, we have gotten the provisional certificates from, for, uh, Cambridge and some, uh, Fitchburg and <coughs> Somerville. Um, I just came this evening at 7 p.m. I had a hearing in front of the uh, Board of Selectmen, and I'm sorry, the Planning Board in Cambridge, in which we were just awarded a uh, unanimous vote, 5 nothing. We got our special permit for Cambridge. Um, so, again, that's been a process we've been going over for about a year. It's um, from its start to finish and everything, from getting the letter of non-opposition until today, it's been about a year. Now we still have to go back before them again to get the final conditions of uh, the permit. Um, so we, we have the special permit. Throughout the whole thing, we've been vetted. The issue of my dad has come up. Um, it's been satisfied at every level across the board, be it Fitchburg, Somerville, Cambridge, and the DPH, so there's four different you know, three cities and towns, and as well as the DPH that have all had this addressed to their satisfaction. Michael. Okay. Michael has it down first. Please. So, can you tell me what towns or cities you have applied to and been denied, and then what the rationale was or the reason for being denied? Okay, well, I'll take that. I, we have been, for example, the towns, well in round one we applied in Lowell and that's when they're doing the point system. We missed by two points in Lowell. It turns out that, for example, one of the questions we lost points on is <coughs> they said, tell us the plan of how you'll get insurance. Well since we're a nonprofit since 2008 we already had insurance so we attached a copy of our rider showing that we already had insurance. So that's our plan to get it, we have it. They took off points because we didn't have a plan of how to get it, we actually attached the insurance. So. We lost by two points. It turns out that the former Speaker of the House was their main advocate, and we think it was a little 
home cooking that they got it instead of us. And it turns out that Patriot Care, the company that has three out of the nine open right now is actually Columbia Care, which is actually Goldman Sachs. So if you want to really dig into who are these applicants who are in the Commonwealth, right there, three out of the first seven to get licenses were Goldman Sachs. They're the ones who beat us by two points in Lowell. So there's a town where we tried and got denied. In round two, we have been, we haven't been denied by anybody. We've rescinded, uh, we're <coughs> trying to rescind certain things and, and go where we can in a, looking at demographics, looking at the populations we can best serve, population density, finding an appropriate uh, facility within you know, certain factors that were appealing to us. And so when we <coughs> applied and we requested of the mayor a letter and we were able to get it based on our merits. In Somerville, when we applied, we went through a long process. Uh, where there were 18 applicants and at the end they awarded five letters for which will ultimately be three. We are one of those three. We're the only one in our district that was awarded a letter. The other two, uh, two t zones each had two people get a letter where they had kind of had to duke it amount, out amongst themselves. So there'll be one in each zone in Somerville. Um, in other communities we've gone before We've pulled out for various reasons, <coughs> like for Redford, they were just taking so long dragging their feet that we didn't think we'd ever get anything out of them within a reasonable amount of time. I don't think they had the even. Right, they, they're dragging their, they're hoping they can hide and no one, they'll, it'll just go away and that they haven't had, they don't have their ordinance yet or anything like that. So it's our impression that they're just hoping it goes away. So since we can't wait, they just didn't fall, they weren't, eligible within our timeline. Um, since I've been here, I've now been working to get into Melrose. I met with the mayor there. We're working on Watertown, Malden, Haverhill, and um, Medford. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I'm very confident that by the end of the month, we may be able to get a letter. But our first pick because our investor owns that property at 81 Concord Street, so it would be perfect, um, as well as one of our other investors so owns a business in North Reading. Um, this is our number one choice. This is where we want to be, and we'll do everything and anything in our power to locate it at that property in North Reading. Um, so I humbly stand before you today just to make a few requests and offers, and that if we are awarded a letter sooner than later, we will commit uh, a minimum of $200,000 to the town within six months of commencement. We will put a moratorium on when we even apply. So if we get a letter, we won't even apply for the special permit for 60 days, April 1st, whatever. Um, We'll work with you. You can make it fully revocable. The last line of the one from Somerville says, may letter be, may be revoked at any time. I'm just humbly standing before you today asking in the strongest possible terms that if you think you might like the letter in two weeks or two months or two years, can you please do it sooner than later? Because I know there's two other groups that are looking at North Reading. I know that our application expires next month. I know that we're going to be a great partner. We're going to do everything we can, humanly possible, to, to work with you, to answer all the questions you might have, to understand how it works, the relationship <coughs> of our for-profit and our non-profit, which I can very simply say is the investors are preparing when they got in, get a return of 8 to 12 percent on their investment, and they will get their cost plus 25 percent on the contracts <coughs> that, that we do. That's all been approved by the DPH. Every single thing we have is available at the Mass Department of Public Health website. It's all public record. We've been more than forthcoming with everything that we have. We'll open our books to you. We will work with you. There's nothing we won't do to make you happy. And at the end of the day, you can stand before your constituents and say, we got the best deal for the town. I feel like I made a very strong gesture by, I negotiated against myself by already coming to you and saying, we'll give you 3% of the first 4 million and 4% thereafter. I've negotiated myself in good faith by saying, if, you, if I get a better, because we haven't written the ink on the paper on the host fee agreement in Somerville, if 
Mayor Curtitone of Somerville negotiates a stronger deal, without question, I will hand it over to you right there and without a question match it. I'm already negotiating against myself to, that we will not do better for another community than we will do for North Reading. So if you ever feel that you might ultimately have a medical marijuana dispensary, I'm asking you to strongly consider working with us because we promise we will be the best partner for the town of North Reading and we'll do everything to really increase your comfort level and if you feel the need to rip up the letter in 60 days, in two weeks or six months, you can do that. Because once we get our provisional, we can change addresses for $10,000. But if we don't get our provisional by February, by the end of February, we lose the $100,000, we have to reapply, we lose six months. And with all the investment that we've made in our grow facility in Fitchburg, and we're putting into Cambridge and Somerville, it's not sustainable with just two dispensaries. We need the third one. And, you know, if we don't place it here, I'm going to have to move to a community that I'm really not as excited about, not whatever. So I'm just putting all my cards on the table. Jeffrey. Yeah, just a quick question. What's, what is your end date uh, as far as the letter is concerned? February 26th. 26th. Okay. So the so that's DPH date. <laughs> Our application expires with the DPH on February 26th. Our application expires on February 26th. That's when it expires, okay. From the date we get the letter, it takes the DPH 30 to 32 days to approve us. So we need the letter because if we, if we don't get a letter within the next week or two, we will expire. Right, if we wait till the 31st, we uh, you, we don't have time. You, you said February 26, right? right. So you, you have you, what you are giving me conflicting information. Okay, you have to have it in their hands okay, by what explain. date? We um, we're here tonight. Yeah, I see it. Seeking a letter. Okay. Our application with the DPH expires February 26. Right. The DPH from the date we get the letter to our application expiring. The DPH, if we don't get a letter like tonight, and we're asking for it tonight, um, with, with, with the understanding that you can rip it up at any time, we're just asking for a letter so that our application doesn't expire. If we get it on the 31st, that's only 26 days. The DPH generally takes 30 to 35 days to approve our application. So we will have expired. If we get a letter <coughs> on the 31st and our application expires on the 26th and the DPH takes 30 to 35 days, it will have expired. And the letter- So even though they have the application in hand? Absolutely. It will expire? It will expire. They haven't and taken we will care have of to, We will have to reapply. So our ask tonight is to, our ask tonight is for a, a letter of non-opposition and in two weeks if you take a vote and you decide against it you can revoke the letter that's our that's that's our ask mr o'leary a uh, couple of questions uh, one getting back to mr prisco's question as to where else i didn't hear anything about bill rick or woburn and i understand yeah. there was some sort of application kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so what, what happened to bill rick what happened to bill rick what happened to woburn you know okay let me step back a little in Lowell, we were the only applicant that got a letter of, of support, not non-opposition, and, and again, we lost that bid by two points. That's behind us. Um, and Bill Ricca and Woburn, I guess, I, I guess we did apply for a license, and they... Um, no, that's from the BFC. <laughs> there was an anonymous letter yeah. from an email that was unable to be tracked or what have you, but I'll tell you right now, a competitor sandbagged us by sending a letter to the uh, Lowell paper and did whatever, trying to blow up the competition, okay? I have found out that since every single, there was a call into the mayor's office in Somerville almost every day trying to resend, and they're resending this letter. It is a competitor trying to blow us up. So when Wubern yeah, got this letter, they said, 
They were about to give us a letter. They were about to give us a letter in non-opposition. Then someone sent them this anonymous email from Richard B. F. Saunders, and with this big long thing. And if you really read it, you really see it's public record because it's been it's out there, and I'll provide it to you, uh, as well as our response. That's what was sent to the DPH, which spurred to this whole thing. Woburn said, that's it, I, I, I can't even deal with it. They threw up their hands and just got up the process and then we rescinded our application, that was the end of it. And they said, we're not having any dispensaries in town. And Bill Ricca, the same, that was mentioned to us and we just stepped back and we rescinded our application and we stepped back. Um, but that's what happened, is that a competitor tried to blow us up, We they felt that we were their strongest competition and they tried to do whatever they could to blow us off and that's exactly what happened. Has, has Bill Ricca issued a, uh, any letters or? No. Not, not, no, to, not date? to my knowledge. No. Uh, any? At, not to my knowledge. No. Uber? No. 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 <laughs> Neither of them. Okay. The, the, the other thing is, is what, what I was contemplating this evening before your comments uh, was getting a consensus of the board to enter into some sort of negotiations with you for us at our next meeting, which is the 6th of February, to make a determination of whether or not to issue the letter. And again, if you say that doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, Mrs. Manupelli is not here, um, but what I was going to suggest to the board is that uh, the chairman appointed a subcommittee to sit down, go over these, again, we have some of the um, host agreements that were provided to us and some other people have offered some other ones from other uh, uh, places around the Commonwealth. But come down and come to some terms and then during the course of the next two weeks, share it with the, the entire board so that at the next meeting we can make a determination as to whether or not to issue a letter of, letter of non-opposition. But what you're saying is that doesn't work for you. February 6th doesn't work. No, it doesn't not. <laughs> I couldn't imagine getting a letter on February 6th and having, you know, dying on the vine on the 26th. I, I don't think we'll be able to, with all, every, with every trick up our sleeve and everything we could do, I don't see the DPH turning around. We, gave, we told the example last time of when we did someone's application and by accident someone wrote 2064 instead of 1964. They knew it was wrong, but they waited four weeks to tell us. We corrected it that afternoon and they waited four weeks to then approve it. So it took eight weeks because someone put a 20 instead of a 19. It, so what, would, uh, what would happen if on the 6th of February, if we were so inclined this evening, and I don't know if we're going <coughs> or not, so inclined to, to issue a letter, letter of non-opposition this evening and then review it again on the 6th of February and rescind it, what happens to you? Well, in the meantime, we would submit that application, and my understanding is, is that if we got the... We, the DPH would call and say, did you write this letter? Uh, once they answered, you'd answer that yes, we wrote that letter, or no, we didn't. So in the meantime, that would happen. Um, I hope We wouldn't have to reapply. I think, that's cool. I think we would not have to go back and start the process from day one again and reapply and spend another sixty to $100,000 to reapply. We could take um what was what the letter that you gave us submitted to the DPH and if you rescinded it we could take we could take that and move on to another community without having to restart the process all over again. We've been in this process for four years. I can't even imagine to um do it again. I don't know. I had my lobbyists look into it and say what happened to other people, because the, right now, if there's a DPH web dashboard, you can go on. There's 86 entities that have their provisional licenses that haven't, that don't yet have their final provision. When you think about it, that sounds like a lot, but in reality, there's mo more than half of those. They don't have the money to proceed. They haven't. So what, what we found out was that we had them ask the DPH directly, has anyone been through that process that have timed out, have they been allowed to proceed? And the answer was no. No, they haven't been able to proceed. They've, they expired. The, the way it's written, you have to have your provisional by 
the time your application expires. Ms. Steele. Yes. And Mr. I'm Mr. not sure if I should be asking you this question or should be asking legal counsel this question, but if we agree to have a letter of non-opposition support, we agree to do that tonight, okay? And we follow what Steve was suggesting that we have a subcommittee of some sorts. We meet in the next two weeks, okay? Uh, you will have, in the meantime, have submitted that letter, yeah. okay? Um, and we, we have a discussion for two weeks, and we decide that, you know what? I don't think this is for us. I don't think it's a good idea. We decide to rescind the letter. My question is at this point is, a, what's in it for you in the sense that, because we've submitted the letter, all right, and and the Department of Health, is that correct? Public Health, yeah. Public Health um, uh, has that letter. If, if we notify the Department of Public Health that we've rescinded the letter, do we know what happens? Are we, are we bound, still bound, uh, by that letter? And um, does, um, I mean, can we stop it at that point by rescinding it in two weeks? Yeah, we'd be out of the equation, but they'd still be alive. But that, yeah, exactly. that, that, that's right. it, and that's I was true. getting right. to that. I was getting right. to that. We can okay. change so We're doing, you want us to do your favor is what you're asking us to do. Right. 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 You can rescind the letter okay. at any time in the process. You can rescind it in two weeks if you took a vote against us. You could rescind it somewhere down the road. Yeah, but this letter I'm worried about is, the impact this, it has this, on us. This yeah. letter is, you know, basically saying uh, uh, non-opposition to. It's not saying we're in support right. of it. Right. right. Yes, Michael, you had your hand up. I would like to go, but I'd like the town administrator to go first, and yeah. then I'm going to go second, because okay. I have a feeling he's going to say something that I'm helping in my next one. So um, <clears throat> one of the challenges that, that, that I'm facing is just to put it out there, we've been advised by our attorney that prior to, to signing on to any host community agreement with CAS or any other foundation that, um, well, I should say, that, that we should sign, have an, an, a signed agreement in place prior to issuing a letter of non-opposition. That's the procedure that we've been advised of from a oh. kind of discussion standpoint. Right. You're, you're representing that, that there's another alternative or another way to do that. I guess I'd, I'd want to ask. You know, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that, Counselor? <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, that is our advice. Uh, that has been our advice to other towns. Uh, it gets to the heart of the question that's been talked about here. What is the effect of submitting uh, a letter of non-support, uh, non-opposition or support? When can that be rescinded? At what time period? Uh, Honestly, that is part and parcel of the Department of Public Health's approval process. is controlled entirely by the Department of Public Health. I cannot sit here before you and tell you I can tell you with certainty that if you gave them a letter tonight and a month later said I want to rescind that letter, that that rescission would be effective to prevent the DPH from moving ahead with approval of this um, a license for this location. I don't know that and I can't say that. That is an internal DPH process and I could see to verify it. I'm not sure how far I would get with that, frankly. Um, we have had boards um, rescind letters or at least attempt to rescind letters. Um, my limited understanding of this is that if the applicant is still in the citing phase of the application that a rescission letter could be effective if they've moved on and been issued a provisional certificate. My understanding is that that letter would not be effective because they moved beyond the stage of the process where they actually need the letter once they have it and they move to the next stage. I'm not sure that it would be effective to rescind. But just, if I, just, just in relation to the, the special permitting process that they have to go through, that has to do with the siting, obviously. Correct. And then, so that would impact. DPH's decision or ability of a community to back out if if the town of the Board of Selectmen said, you know, this doesn't work for us now. Right, but let's let's just be clear about that. They're not they're not at the same level in terms of the discretion of the board. 
letter of support or non-opposition is entirely discretionary with this board. There is no standard, it's just yes or no. If that letter is issued and they come before you for a special permit, you are now governed by the criteria of the zoning bylaw. You don't have unlimited discretion anymore. Your discretion is controlled with the zoning bylaw. Yeah. So if you're looking for the answer of where do you have the most discretion, it's right now. Thank you. I absolutely understand your motivation, okay? You have to understand something. I'm only going to speak for myself. I saw you and I met you and I've only heard about you 15 days ago. And you're asking us to take a leap of faith within 15 days. Well, without a long dissertation, can you tell me why you weren't here 30 days or 60 days ago? Why, why did you come here 15 days before you okay. needed something? Because of the week ago, we were told we had to wait, 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 and get my community. And half the week ago, it was Halloween, it was Thanksgiving, it was Christmas, it was New Year's. Of the election. It was the election. Everyone was saying, wait until question four. So, so we've been. Um, so our hands were tied, basically. Um, we had some other properties that we're interested in and some other cities that we're looking in and for other reasons that we hadn't. We eventually got to a point where we focused on getting moving forward with Cambridge and Somerville. And when we really put got far enough to the point where we could have the bandwidth, because it's a very small group. When I'm doing so much in Fitchburg, Cambridge and Somerville, when we finally had the bandwidth to move forward, all of a sudden, we found that the, a lot of the cities were saying, wait till question four. I need to see where question four goes. Wait till the election. So for the months of October and November, all I heard was after the election, after the election. And then after the election, we're hearing. You made a bad decision. I'm sorry. You made a bad decision. I am not ready and prepared to make a decision tonight. You know how I stand. I put all my cards on the table. Yeah. But there's two reasons. One, I have a fellow board member who's not here tonight. This is very near and dear to her heart. And I would never vote on something so important without her sitting next to me. Second of all, tactical error on your part. You can't come to a town or in a city and ask for something in 15 days and expect to get it. Third thing you did wrong, full disclosure. Okay? Never think anything is behind you, ever. If I can go on the internet and search for you and that's what comes up, you disclose it early and often. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I have a, no disrespect. I don't need a response. I'm just telling you feedback for when you go out to the next city in town. It's full disclosure. Nothing is behind you when it's on the internet. And that letter that you referenced in Woburn, or in Belrica, it, I, I, had to, I had to go and I did my own research and I saw it. I should have heard it from you. And if you can, in, if there's something like that's already out there, what else is out there? I have a police chief. When I brought it up to him, he was concerned about it. So. You know, you're asking for something in 15 days. You weren't in full disclosure of all this other stuff. I need more time, okay? And we want to make sure we do this right. I understand you have a very important business decision. You made the decision not to come here until 15 days ago. You have to live with that decision. So I just want my fellow board members, if you guys elect tonight, the three of you, to go ahead and go forward with this, that's absolutely perfectly fine, but you're not going to get my support on it because I need more time. And I'd like an opportunity to speak with the town administrator, the police chief, and I don't care if we have to do an executive session or open session. It needs to be done. It needs to be done in the right for the right of our town. Okay? You sound like wonderful people. I know you you probably will deliver a wonderful facility. And the money doesn't mean anything. It's the safety of our communities and first and foremost. I don't care about the money. And I don't care about the money either. I am a passionate woman who cares about voted for this four years ago and it was beyond our control and over the last four years and how things have gone. In the first round they were going to award 35 licenses. They did not and only nine are open to this day. So the patients have been waiting a very, very long time. So I can appreciate everything that you said and I apologize um, for not disclosing, but I, as I said, and I know you don't agree with it, I thought all of this was behind us because we have been extremely vetted and we have gone through the rigor and everything and um, everything is past muster or we wouldn't have 
um, licenses in Cambridge and Somerville, nor in Fitchburg, nor would we have the approval of the DPH. They would have thrown us out a long, long time ago. So I'm just a passionate woman who has a daughter who died from a drug addiction. So it's very near and dear to my heart as well. So I'll just leave it with that. So I, I can certainly appreciate the tactic, Clara. And thank you for the comments. I, I appreciate it. Uh, do you think these are problems we can overcome? That. You're not going to overcome it by the time you need it to get done. Unless well, what about at the 31st? I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, is there any possible way in the future? I mean, at any point that you can overcome these well, obstacles with you? I mean, we certainly weren't trying to mislead you. You've got to let us do our job. You have to let us do our job at the speed that we do. That's all I'm asking. But I, unfortunately, it doesn't match up to what you need to do. Right. And the first and foremost, when it comes to this marijuana, whether it's recreational or, or medical, it's in the public safety. It's our number one thing. We've got to make sure how we integrate in this community the best way it fits for our community. I don't care with no disrespect to DPH and anyone else. This is our community, and we have to fool it. We have to vet you as we use that anyone else. Yeah. Even though they vet you, you get vetted here. Right. We, have a, we have a police chief. We have lieutenants in our investigative um, group, they know what they're doing, and they may come up with the same results or they may not. Right. And if you were full disclosure from day one, you probably would have saved a little bit of time for it. Okay. So as soon as we find little hiccups in our vetting, yeah. this is where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they say uh, desperation is an ugly beast, and <laughs> I, I apologize, because maybe that's what you're seeing today, is that I can put myself in your shoes and say, I don't know who they are, it's been here 15 days ago, I get it. Um, I've had an issue with my lobbyists who've been trying to get us in before Reading, long before here. It was only through a friend of a friend that was able to make the final call that actually got us before some people in here, but it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, and we thought Reading didn't want it. And um, At the end of the day, I apologize. Never meant to mislead you. I apologize for putting you in the position where we're coming to you desperately, and it's ugly. And uh, so I, I see where you're coming from. I really get it. The end of the day, though, I think mm -hmm. the more you learn, the more comfortable you get. Right. Uh, before we bring this to any conclusion, uh, Michael and Jeff may not be fully aware. We've been talking about having another board meeting in January. Michael, you want to elaborate on why you might want to another meeting? There's another strike. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not related to this. That purpose was uh, related to a discussion of health insurance. Um, we know that this is generally a very busy time when it comes to, to that topic. So um, based on just a series of things that are related to timing and desire to maintain an open discussion with our insurance advisory committee, uh, I had had a conversation uh, last Wednesday with the chairman about scheduling uh, a meeting uh, devoted to that topic uh, for either uh, the upcoming Monday, uh, the 23rd, or the following Monday, the 30th. And that would have been Which discussed be uh, probably at the end of the, at the, end of the night tonight. I, I'd have that night off, wouldn't I? Conceivably. <laughs> well, I, I think why I asked the question, it, it's clear that the board is in no position to make a decision tonight. One is we don't have a full board. And if I knew all <coughs> four board members were in support of issuing a letter tonight, you know, I, I think I'd entertain it. But I know that isn't the case. And therefore, I think we should do this when we have a full board. And just to be fair to our board member who could not be here this evening. This is Tuesdays are not our regular meeting nights, they're Monday nights, and once in a while we get stuck with the typical holiday schedule and we end up having to move things around. Second is our attorney <laughs> made a very interesting point that I hadn't given any thought to, and that was before we issue a letter, perhaps we should sit down and see if we can finalize an agreement to get it to a point where it makes sense, where we still have leverage. So why I brought the question up is, I know you're on a time frame issue, and uh, if we 
manage to have a meeting, uh, I'm looking, it would be, I guess, the 30th. Right. It might put you in a little better position if we could get to the point of getting a little subcommittee together, sitting down with you at some point between now and then, and hammering out some form of an agreement that made sense, and then bring it to the board for a final approval on the 30th. I don't know if that helps you. That would be great. Yeah, but that might be the best thing that we can do. And I don't know if I have full agreement on all the members of the board on that issue. I'm, I'm a, you want to do it on Monday the 30th? Yeah. I have something, but I will do everything I can to move it to make it to be here that evening. It shouldn't be a problem, but I am Jeff? leaving the next Monday. day, so don't, uh, don't try to move it another day because I'll be gone. <laughs> um, my only request is that this be discussed first rather than last, simply because I can't participate in the meeting with the anyone. Oh, we can arrange okay. uh, Well, I don't know. We'll structure yeah, the, we can structure it. Yeah, yeah we sure. Point. So we will schedule a meeting for 7 o'clock? Well, I, on the the sorry, I'm sorry. Can you just make sure you check the tape before you finalize anything? Because we really can't do it without it. And I hate that all of us be in agreement and have her say no, and then we're kind of back to the same. Well, I will, I will call her. So tentatively, yes. She had, you know, Tuesdays is a busy I, I know. meeting day. For us. But I know we never had 30, the 30th okay. is not scheduled, not even as a placeholder. Do you know what the 30th time-wise is probably going to be a very good time for us to have the meeting with everything going on uh, in regards to J.T. Berry and some of the other warrant items that we may want to address anyway, so it's, it's probably not a bad thing. So then I would ask you, who would be the contact how could we get a discussion going to talk about a proposal to get any other questions vetted? Uh, this would be not a, a regular meeting, it would be just with the subcommittee of board members and the town administrator. Right. Yeah. Right. I'll leave you my card, but I will leave you his card. You can contact either one of us. Michael, one more question. So, if I'm reading my note correctly, the 30th doesn't do you any good. Well, it may. I, we're, we will get it to the TBH, and I'll call them Not personally and, and <laughs> tell them the situation and, and basically do everything we can to expedite it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's impossible. Okay. Gives us 26 days if they're averaging 30. I, I think it's doable, especially given the fact that it's going to expire. So um, okay. that would be amazing. I, I couldn't tell you how much I'd appreciate that. I, appreciate it. I just want I, there was some discussion tonight um, with their attorney about recreational. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I just want to make it clear with the board, and we've discussed this before, that I'm um, philosophically opposed to recreational. So in our contract with you, we would certainly agree to never um, bring recreational to the to your town. <coughs> Us as a group. Now other groups, I don't know about that, but we can certainly agree that we, we as a group will never do that to you. And I'd be more than glad to be on that subcommittee as I mentioned. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Michael. Two questions, or, or a question and a comment, I guess. The first is uh, just following up on the kind of earlier part of the discussion about your, your husband. Yes. Um, we, we did do some research to, over the course of the afternoon today when this uh, question was brought up, and it really just came up from a uh, simple Google search. It wasn't submitted to us or anything like that. It was just really some we didn't get the email. Yeah, we, we, we didn't yeah, get the we email, didn't right? Know, Mom, about this. We haven't told anything to anyone. Uh, so, uh, but, but my question is, uh, I do see that there is a company that may or may not be in existence at this point associated with a, 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 a common address, and it's Circle of Care Incorporated. Oh, Does it have any connection with this? Is there any involvement no. with? No. None? No. no. And I only ask because you have mentioned that there's a there maybe for-profit contract or uh, no, operations. No, no, no. That's no. defunct, out of business, probably yeah. 2004, oh, Okay. Like, way, way before that was a, 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 a I published a patent on um, telemedicine it was like the connected it's like making house calls using mm -hmm. the latest technology so you could send a nurse who video mm -hmm. conference with a doctor and do all that and 
my dad helped me with the funding for that to get the patent and do everything. But okay. that went nowhere because we couldn't afford enforce the patent against like a huge medical company. So, so but that's okay. And then the comment is that the, in terms of the timing and the delay, uh, Mr. Erickson's taken a bit of the beating over in the back, but I, I have to take some of the responsibility as well. I mean, he was very diligent over the course of December trying to get in touch, and it wasn't until we went into that meeting in the Representative Jones' office to uh, uh, to sit down with him for other purposes that we were able to, to finally all sit down. But that, that, you know, there certainly could have been uh, more work on my part to make this take take place more quickly. And I, I would say it's perhaps not not realizing the timeliness of the application that, at the time. So uh, I'll apologize for that. Aaron's been wonderful. I can't complain. Thank you. Right. Okay, so uh, someone from our office will get in touch with them. Is that what we'll do? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, Chris and I have spoken pretty regularly, or Bert and I could speak either way. <coughs> Any suggestions on who should be uh, two members of the board? That I'd be happy to do it. I just want to make one more statement, and it probably has no, no bearing on my decision um, over the letter. But when I was screening hearts and saving lives before I got into the medical marijuana space, um, and we started the CAS Foundation, we had a very difficult time raising money, so we didn't want any child to go on the screen. So I, with my husband's consent, um, screened all those children with family funds. I have never taken a dime from the foundation. In fact, we have put in many, many, many dollars into the foundation um, to screen hearts and save lives. And again, we've saved over 100 children's lives. So. If anybody's concerned about who my husband is, he is a person who supports me completely and has allowed me to spend um, excess family funds to screen children across the state, um, country. Because we started locally and ended up nationally. So. In fact, Jane's being humble. We had sponsors to pay for the entire thing and they backed out. And it wasn't until they backed out, All Children's Hospital told us that we could walk away from it. And that's when we put up our own personal family money to screen those kids because we thought it deserved to happen and that they deserved the screenings. So in classic Jane fashion, she told the story, but she left out the, to me, which is the most poignant part. We had sponsors lined up to pay for the exact entire thing. And when they walked out, she spent over $2 million of her own money to screen these kids. It was 240,000 kids in the eighth largest school district in the country. We didn't have to do it. We could have walked away. It would have been no problem whatsoever. We did it out of the own goodness of our heart. It's few and far between that you'll find someone like that. And I don't care if it's billionaires or whoever. A lot of people wouldn't do that. And we did that to step up to the plate to screen these kids because we made a commitment. We said we'd do it. And even though some big packers like GE pulled their money out, Jane rise to the occasion, put up over $2 million and screened these kids as well. Right. And, and since I've been on hiatus for my daughter's death and then I got involved in this, since then we've been asked to come back to screen hearts and save lives again. That's why I'm so passionate about this because the monies that can be raised from this can go back into hot screen. So. Okay, I, I don't want to be rude. No, nope, that's but okay. I'm going to cut you off. We have other items on the agenda <laughs> and it's already uh, 10 minutes of 10. Thank you all for your time and your patience. We will get back to you. There will be two members of the board and the town administrator and anyone else that, uh, no more board members, but anyone else and that. Does everyone have our contact in Bert and I's contact? I think okay. I, have, we, we, I, I believe I, at minimum, have Bert and Chris's contact information. I think I have your card as well. Okay, well, Great. whomever you can okay. get any information. So, so all I can say is that you're probably going to need to be fairly flexible because mm -hmm. oh, yeah. getting Absolutely. board members who are, are non-paid and uh, most of us work. Uh, yeah. I can appreciate that. We all work. <laughs> Thank you for all your time. Thank you very much. And it, it may be Karen in my office that you hear from as well. Okay. Back to our agenda. I think the next agenda? one is appointments. Who 
We have an appointment for um, I guess the committee does services. Uh, you got a minute on the lead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Read the uh, motion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment as members of the Youth Services Committee for a term to expire on December 31, 2019. Openings eight. There are six nominees. Okay, eight and six. Okay. Okay. Peter Majang, 800 East 7th Street, South Boston, incumbent. Karen Buscemi, 3 Liberty Lane, incumbent. Leslie Schultz, 4 Central Street, incumbent. Frank Ferraro, 15 Irwin Road, incumbent. Samantha Miller, 68 North Street, incumbent. Sandy Garnis, 6 Yankee Woods Drive, incumbent. Second. Saying it by Mr. O'Leary, uh, I've, uh, Kath, Kathleen asked me to, uh, Catherine asked me to uh, represent these appointments this evening because she couldn't be here. Uh, the, uh, the motion as it stands, and I've talked to uh, Mr. Manjane uh, on these reappointments. The committee, the uh, liaison, are all in support of uh, this motion. So with that, I was, uh, I had a second. Yes. So all yeah. We, all we need is a, right, a standard a vote. vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? And again, we had, we had at least I know, one other applicant. There, there is now, I think, two additional applicants. And one vacancies. of them, uh, I spoke to uh, Barbara Stats, needs to uh, contact the Ethics Commission. She's a town employee. It's, it's not cutting new ground, but it's a requirement. Okay. So that's been set up. And I, I also want to acknowledge the uh, retirement of Mr. Tracy Helms. Tracy Helms. Oh, Miss, 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 Miss Tracy Miss, Helms. Miss, 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 Tracy Helms. For her years of service. She is resigning from the uh, Youth Services Committee. And Tracy was one of the uh, original, originals, right. one of the originals yeah. and uh, persistent, one of the original persistent individuals. Uh, Right. And uh, again, to manage to get three out of five votes to yeah. get the thing off the ground from yeah. the Board of Selectmen. Yes, yeah, she did. So uh, I want to thank her for her, uh, for her service, and, yes. uh, and I'll be the first to admit that it was uh, an effort that was put into yeah. it. And, and, uh, uh, and what's you. come to fruition yeah. from it has, has been uh, terrific, yeah. and I, I didn't have the foresight to see it at the time. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, <coughs> Uh, thank you, Larry, for being put together, which I will sign to send her. Terrific, great. Okay. Let Kathleen deliver. Next. Next. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, I move to place in nomination the following name for appointment as representative to the Reading Municipal Light Department Citizens Advisory Board for a term to expire on December 31, 2019. Jason, Jason R. Small, 16 Turner Drive, New. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary, and again, this is a recommendation from Kathleen. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? And then we have one more, I believe. You want the water? Yeah, I think so. Actually, we have another one. We have two. You have two, okay? Uh, this no uh, historic commission is what I have. Oh, I'm sorry. And the cable advisory. I don't have any for water. No, you're right. But okay, no water. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment as members of the historical commission. There are two openings, and there are two members here. Stone M. J.C. 13 Sylvia Road, incumbent, for a term to expire December 31, 2019. Peter Antonuccio, 16 Havel Street, new, for a term to expire December 31, 2018. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. I do not have any comments regarding 
these appointments. I'll just ask for a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Nope, we another one here. Mr. Chairman, I move to place a nomination the following name for appointment as a member of the Cable Advisory Committee for an unexpired term. There are two openings. This is uh, Peter Zavitz-Tufsky, 9 Homestead Terrace is new. Uh, again, uh, he's a new member, and uh, Catherine is recommending his appointment. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. You don't have for water? I have none for water. The Water Commission, Mike, is also the liaison. For the water commission yes and he reappointed somebody on the 19th yep oh he did so yep. then the, then i just uh wanted to comment on the uh <coughs> retirement of mr perkins for his services on the water commission yes did we do that already too on the water commission yeah okay. he did that yeah. You did, did recognize him? I'm sorry. Oh, no, we didn't, I don't know if we recognize him. We recognize... Who was it? Um, Mr. Perkins. Mr. James Perkins. Perkins. So, yeah, yeah, Jim, yeah, he did yeah, he moved out of town. Jim was in... I, right. Was did we recognize no, no, no. him? I don't believe we did. Okay, so, so we we're should. also sending him a letter. Along with Jack Collins, and he'll be commissioned, too. Yes. Oh, okay. I misunderstood what you talking about. Yeah. Did you hear that? So we want to send a letter. Did also put a letter together for Jack Collins for his service on the water? Uh, he'll be uh, Jim, Jim Perkins on water. Yeah. And, and if we could, one slide, it when we do the uh, boards and appointments in the June Town meeting, we should just have one slide that captures all of those folks, just to thank them when we do the boards and committees. If we can remember to do that, I think it's it's just a nice gesture. Okay, uh, we've got minutes to go back to. So we do did. We away or should we yeah, just we wait? We, we do, yes. We're, okay. I'll let you. Just to uh, remind everybody, November 3rd, strategic planning meeting, uh, we're passing over that. It's not complete. We approved the uh, regular session of November 7th, and... I thought... Okay. Okay. So oh, there they are. The These are the top. After the 7th, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Let me do that. Okay. Do and these are motions. Um. Okay. <laughs> so we have not approved the December 5th regular session. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 5th, 2016 regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Hearing not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? And uh, did we do the d December? I have them here. Did you get the December 5th? 5th? Executive session. Executive session. Did, right? uh, yes, we did that one. <coughs> so now we have December 19th regular session. That's correct. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 19th, 2016 regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. And we also have an executive session for December 19th. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 19th, 2016 executive session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion or any reason not to approve? On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's it. Opposed? Unanimous. Town Administrator's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no report this evening. Okay. All the new business, Mr. Prisco. Yes, I just wanted to update the board on the RFP for 102 Lowell Road. I 
the EDC met this week, this week, no, last week, and we went over the draft. There was a lot of discussion, and the, your draft we started with basically was essentially what we had for 104. Had for what? We had for 104 a lower road. The only discussion that we spent a lot of time on was since we put 104 out and we only got back residential and one, res one I guess, somewhat retail was the four kicks. There was a lot of discussion on the board about do we want to just put her, as we do an evaluation, we can also determine in the RFP that we won't evaluate any proposals that have com a housing in it as an option. That's what we were considering. So we had a lot of discussion on that. And it looks in what ended up happening was we did vote in favor, unanimous, I believe it was, no, it was not unanimous. Mr. Wellner was uh, the, he, he was the one that voted against it. But the majority of the EDC members want to put a restriction in the evaluation that we only want commercial proposals. Since we have such a sizable housing now going in there with uh, Pulte Scenario 1, that we want to take the two and a half acres and put the RFP and focus it on commercial. But I wanted to come and share that here with the board. If there's any feedback you want me to take, take back or you want to take some time to think about it, we meet on, I believe, Thursday next week to make a final determination on it to send it to you guys for final approval. But I figured I'll bring it here and we can have a quick discussion about it. I can take that feedback back to the EDC for next Thursday. And what we if we go back to day one when it was all going to be uh, commercial, well, I mean, way back when, when well, here, first a, one out, yeah, uh, yep. that was kind of being reserved there. Uh, this occurred once the apartments get put in. Uh, <coughs> no, no, it was it was feedback. It was feedback of the board. They want to try to put a restaurant there. Yeah, and with all the housing that's being proposed. Things that might be just the right thing to do. Well, here's some more information just so you know why we made the decision the way we did. Or oh, we're making the recommendation the way we are. <clears throat> when we know we go to town meeting, there's going to be some objection to all this house, but we're going to try to explain at town meeting that these are the proposals we've received, even though we tried to make the RFP as flexible as we possibly could to still incentive, have some incentive out there for commercial, some retail, and we never got it. So if we can go ahead and put a restriction in our evaluation criteria that we're going, only going to evaluate commercial for this particular location, I think may at least send the right message to the community that we're trying our best. And if we get no bids, that's okay. We just come back here, we can modify the RFP, and if I'm saying anything wrong, Michael, let me know, but we can go ahead and modify the RFP and release it again <coughs> and and open it back up for other options. Or maybe we'll learn something in the process that may even allow well, us basically to Basically, what you're saying, there's no action required at town meeting regarding that possible because it's already zoned. Well, up. we're going to go to zoning. In the zo you know, it's so already open now. Is it not already zoned for commercial? It is. Yes, but the, the, the zoning proposal for the special town meeting will now allow for residential. That's correct. I thought that was left out. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. That's why we're going to special we, town meeting. No, we'll be included because we want to avoid spot zone. Yeah. This is not a zoning. Oh, okay. This I isn't a zoning it. issue. Okay. Yeah. I, it. Well, I remember. It well, is, it is. It, it is, is a zoning issue. Yeah, you're right. Spot zoning. It, it is a zoning issue. We're not looking to spot zone. That was the whole idea. So yeah. across the street is also going to be a zone for potential residential also. Because yeah. looking to the overlay district is now going to change, allowing yeah. it okay. carte blanche as opposed to cherry picking. Right the lots where you can do things. But we understand that from an evaluation standpoint, we can dictate what proposals we will accept so and evaluate. So you're looking just for some input? Well, I just, yeah, I would like some feedback. And How big is that parcel again? 2.5 acres. 2.5, and, and the uh, sewage package treatment for that parcel? Is designated. Designated? Is an easement. Onto the, the other property, mm -hmm. correct? Yep, that's so correct. So that's still, uh, regardless of what we, Right, Allowed. it happened, right. It's, and that's all been fully disclosed. Right. And Paul again, knew that going in, and they, they're aware of that now. Um, and I understand that we're trying to keep onto this timeline to finish all this by December 2000, 
and 17. So the only risk we take is that this particular parcel may not see the same a sale partnership model percentage share as 104. Mm -hmm. That's the risk we take. Well, do we hear from uh, Rich? You were a minority on your uh, <laughs> <laughs> the minority vote. Minority vote. And, and, and just yeah, no, just briefly. Um, when we were doing the 104, we had a meeting at the library, <coughs> and it was a public uh, open meeting. And the EDC at that time had also expressed they wanted to pursue commercial. Um, there was a few people in the audience who actually said, why limit it to that? Why not open it up, make it an open uh, invitation for people to bid on it? Um, I think Steve O'Leary, I think you. I may have said a word or two. Yeah. yeah, you supported it. A few other people did. And so the outcome, you know, if we had limited it, the RFP to be just commercial only, we wouldn't have had the Pulte come forward. Obviously, there's a substantial amount of money inside there. Um, I think we should just leave it open, let the market tell us what the market can bear. We can probably make our December 2017 deadline if we do. Um, I trust the process. I, my, I myself would rather see something commercial there, but I don't see any reason to not get our choices, get a lot of options on the table, hit our timeline. I trust the process that when EDC sees it, we'll do a good evaluation, make a good recommendation. And even if for somehow we slip through with residential again, it doesn't fit the time, you know, the town's um, desire for what should be there. I think the Board of Selectmen will do a good job of sorting that out as well. So I think we have a lot of safety stops in the process. I trust the process, but I also think we should get it open. Let's see what comes in the door. I don't see the harm of just getting as much as we can at this point and expediting the matter as fast as we possibly can. Could Mike, if I'm from the majority standpoint, I mean, I, I guess it was discussed at length, but um, yeah. if you were to leave the process open, I would think with, with the proposal that we're accepting, that for the other two and a half acres, it would probably yep. gender a little bit more of a look yep. from a commercial base anyway. And again, it, it may not be the most dollars and cents for the sale price of the property, but by the same token, we don't have to take the highest bidder. No, we don't. Yeah. So I mean, um, I guess the richest point, you know, why, why limit, again, why limit, yep. you know, and see what happens. And I, because my guess is there's going to be some people, commercial people, uh, looking at that two and a half acre uh, parcel because right now you're going to have almost 900 units in your backyard. You know, yeah. I wouldn't mind having a Dunkin' Donuts in myself or a Starbucks. But <laughs> <laughs> That's just what we need. Yeah, no. So I, I asked the same question. Yeah. And um, <coughs> Francis DeCoste, he said that if we did that, what's going to happen is that anybody that is a commercial developer that's interested in that lot right now, if they see that we're still going to allow residential, they're probably not going to bid at it because they know that everybody will outbid them from a purchase price standpoint. And they just know that why are they, they're not going to waste their time to put their investment and time into a proposal that they know any <coughs> residential development will far exceed whatever they can offer the town of North Reading for that property. I, I That's guess why. My, my only concern or question is we're about to rezone it as an allowable use yep. for residential anyway. Yep. So if you're going to put an RFP out based upon current zoning, um, the opportunity is there anyway. Other than you're going to put an RFP and say, we allow it by zoning, but we're not going to sell to anybody who's going to do it. Right? We that did. No, we talked about it. Yeah. And we agree. Okay. And no one disagrees with you on that. The point that we were all thinking that we were trying to get across here was we started out, our, our ultimate goal was to try to increase our commercial base. We didn't achieve it on this one, but we did, com we did achieve two other things. We took care of a, a need for the aging community and we needed to increase our tax base, which I think we did successfully. So, but I'm just not so sure we took care of the first part. Yeah. Because I don't think people are going to be able to afford to pay 550000 bucks to move in there. But we'll, we'll see. I love it, but Time will I hope tell. I'm wrong. Um, yeah. So those two things, in, we thought by putting this restriction in the RFP for 102 and really focusing this small parcel on commercial, we could get some of those other maybe retail shops or a, you know, a hotel even something else, maybe one of these larger restaurants. That's all we were trying to establish here because we don't need any more housing because we also understand that we, we have this 40 hour problem still that we have to address at some point. If we end up allowing more housing, if we only get housing 
proposals, we're going to end up accepting one of them if we go down the road, if we open it and keep it open like Mr. Wong is recommending. <coughs> then we make a decision that increases that housing even more. That housing issue related to 40 R. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah um, when I left the meeting, I think everybody had the consensus at that point, anyway, that it was uh, to, to do open. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. then apparently that, you know, I had to leave, but apparently that had changed. Um, uh, with regard to commercial and, and, and restrict, restricting that lot, even though it's only, what, two point, what do we say, 2.4? 2.5 acres. 2 .5 acres. Um, I, and we don't have to take the, the highest bidder, right? So if, nope. we, if we leave it open and see what presents itself, I think that gives more beneficial to the town to be able to um, uh, take advantage of the opportunities that, that the RP will create. As far as, you know, and, and yeah, a restaurant would probably work perfectly in there, and that could be, still be the, des the decision that, that is made. Um, but also, whatever happens at, at uh, 102 and 104 will improve our commercial base in, in on Main Street anyway. Yeah, but if I could just answer your yeah. first part of that. Again, going back to what our broker, commercial broker is saying, I mean, he stands to make more money <coughs> if it's residential. What he's saying is yeah, I if think you he's perfectly satisfied with it. I think so too. I think he's <laughs> okay with that. But with I only want to say it because <laughs> if he he's been around a long time and he knows the process and he knows the folks that are interested and potentially in, interested in bidding on this, if they know we're gonna keep it open, they're not gonna bid because they know there's no way they could ever compete with somebody that's coming in and making an offer to purchase to do housing. No commercial company can do that. Even though we're saying we're open to everything, he said there will be some people that just won't be because they don't, I'm not saying they don't believe us. It's so just the, posi the position of the Economic Development Committee is to keep it zoned commercial? No, we, no. Want, we want to keep it zoned. We the way we're going to town meeting, anyway. we want the zoning. What we're saying is under the RFP, under the bid oh, instructions, by the RFP. We okay. will do our evaluations, mm -hmm. and if someone bids resident or any kind of housing, we're not going to score it. We're not going right. to. We're not going to evaluate it. We're going to kick it out. We can do that in the way we form mm -hmm. and structure the RFP, and so we only will score and evaluate the ones that are commercial offerings. Okay. That's what we're proposing. In a, you know, it was a five to one and one absent, right? Five one and one. Yeah. I think it's the right thing to do. Steve, can, uh, rather than totally limiting, limiting it, and maybe even out there, Michael or Michael, in the wording of the RFP, can we encourage, rather than excluding housing, right. encourage commercial development rather than excluding the housing? And again, to me, it's, you know, see what everybody, and again, it may very well limit it, but it's also going to give him some sort of a, uh, ability to have a dialogue with any interested party, so you know how serious you are. They're serious about it because they put right in here, you know, serious and more f favorable consideration be given to commercial development. Uh, well, housing, well, housing is allowed. You know, uh, commercial development is, is encouraged. You know, commercial development is encouraged to to make a proposal. Yeah. Um, uh, because again, if you're going to limit your RFP and uh, get down to the proposed zoning changes, commercial is going to be allowed there along with residential, right. just mixed yeah. use. Um, but if well, I have an answer that's not a confidence. I mean, my understanding <laughs> is that we could do it, guys. But I think we'd have to change our whole evaluation criteria. So we could score commercial offerings in what they're proposing higher than a residential offering. We could still score this, but they're going to get less points. And then we do a point system, and then at the end, we see how it falls. And that's okay. I mean, and to me, if, if, the, if the EDC is looking to do that and how you determine how you're scoring applicants is entirely up to you, but it ultimately comes to the board right. anyway, um, you know, then collectively right. the board is selecting the recommendation yep. we the commission and the, and the EDC's recommendation is made. I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally in favor of excluding it. You know, I think we should 
allow for whatever to happen, but I'm in favor of encouraging, uh, in writing, encouraging uh, applications for commercial development of this particular parcel in light of what we've already decided what we have. And put it right in the RFP. In light of this over here, we think it would be a nice complimentary thing and it would be, you know, looked upon favorably or whatever, however you want to, yeah. I don't know what the wording would be. It wouldn't necessarily be the best offer that's going to get it. We, we do have kind of a bias towards this, but, you know, here's the offer. And yeah. again, Pulte might say, hey, it's okay, I'm going to offer you another, you know, five million bucks or eight million bucks for, for the two and a half acres to just keep going. We're going to say, you know what, you got your fair share off. We might say, okay, we'll take it. Right. Well, we're going to meet on Thursday, so what I could do is take all this feedback back uh, prior to Thursday's meeting. Give it to Francis, let him talk with our town council that's helping us to see if we can maybe structure it. Our ultimate goal was to try to use the exact same evaluation process so we don't I, yeah, and I, I can see where the evaluation process would be different uh, for the EDC in light of their position right now. And I don't think you're that far off from them either. You yeah, know, no, it's, you it's know, so that, you know, again, again, if I was sitting there, I think I would look at it a little, depending on what the proposals are, but if a commercial developer were to come in that looks pretty favorable with less money, I would score it higher right. based upon what's right. already there. We just want to encourage more people to bid. That's all we're trying to do here that are more commercial options than residential. So, if, you know, if the majority of the board feels strongly that if we structure it in that way and we, we could do it through our scoring, I'm going to run it by town council, I'll run it by Fran, I'll get his feedback, I will get that's back my, to That's my that. opinion. So, I mean, no, so no. Take I, it. See, I'm kind of in the middle. Jeff I was there in the beginning before he left. He saw her. I was on one side. And then I swayed the other side and then I went back. I was all over the board on this one because I'm kind of torn. Uh, I just... I've, <coughs> I'm really you having know, a hard time with yeah, this. To me, you know, I think the zoning is going to allow for certain things to happen there. Uh, we're going to put the RFP out, request for proposals out there, and we're going to say, and this is what we we would look favorably upon commercial development in this particular possible in light of what we know is already developed and going to be developed there. Yeah. And encourage that type of, uh, and I don't know if we can state it right up front, but well, maybe they already know. It's not always to the highest bidder that it goes. Yeah. And the other thing that did come up in the discussion was, well, what happens if we did sell it for commercial use, but a year later they decided, eh, I want to sell, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to sell it, and they end up doing housing there. And I believe the answer was from council that we could put a deed restriction in there. Yep. I mean, you'd have to do that anyway. It doesn't prevent anybody from doing anything. Right. Here's our proposal. You sell it to me, you know, I changed my mind. Right. right. But just in case someone yeah. was thinking that, it's one. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. I think I got my marching orders. I, I, well, you got it for me. I don't know where it was. <coughs> well, I, 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 no, Jeff, I, I, Jeff I, I, said I, he was I, open, and I think oh, Bob okay. was more leaning towards yeah. with me, but, you know, I didn't need a, a, an answer. I just needed feedback. Right. Let me go take it back, um, <coughs> and let's see what we come up with. But we'll get it out on Friday, right after we get done Thursday. Yeah, we'll no. get it out to you guys Friday, and whatever we recommend. Because at the end of the day, we're just making a recommendation. That's all we do board can make any change to this RFP that you want um, but we're going to make a recommendation and we'll see what we get yeah. and, and, and if I remember correctly if we go back to this beginning the beginning of the process uh, we were looking to get the maximum we can get out of this these two parcels as we possibly could get maximum what revenue no no right that's not my position no I, well <laughs> not the state but the state we were, uh, we were no. talking about getting 65 Oh, as far as by the meeting the deadline. So we want to meet the December deadline. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, but but sense I think we have achieved that with the, you know, 104 exceeded everybody's expectations. Yeah, I think good. we have exceeded what where our percentage is going to be. I think we're good on the money side. I think the other piece of this was from feedback that some have heard from the CPC side. There are people in town that are upset that we're going to have resident, residents over there. Um, I wasn't around when we did Lincoln Properties, but I know the feedback was no more housing. Well, unfortunately, that's the way the proposals came in. Yeah, but these yeah. these aren't the same type of housing as. It, that, but it's okay, yeah, Jeff. I will, Steve can it's tell a, you. It's a you know. Based on the feedback. Twenty-second sound bite, forty-five minute explanation. You know, uh, to get people. It's to people are upset. Understand. So, so our one of our philosophies why we were pushing for this commercial restriction was to try to satisfy them we go to town meeting state on this lot we just said in our evaluation we're only going to evaluate commercial to try to at least appease them to try to at least take away some of their 
uh, concerns because we do want them to vote in favor of this. Um, we made this decision. I think we're all um, pretty much on board with it. That's all we were trying to do, is trying to find a strategy to get approval through town meeting. I, I, th I think, um, I, again, I, I've talked to some people since we took our vote position. And, and yeah, I've heard some from people who, uh, you know, more housing and all the rest, that they said, okay, but it's, let it lie dormant, you know, or take two and a half million dollars instead of 30 million dollars, uh, but it's age restricted, so, yeah, you're gonna have more police and fire calls, but you very few kids, if any, in, in the school system, and you're going to have three and a half million dollars a year in revenue that we didn't have before. And the EMS and that will be making and a whole yeah. school <laughs> of fire <order. laughs> yeah, right there. But uh, yeah. but anyway, you know, it. But again, it's a 45 minute conversation in order to bring them yeah. about. And yes, we said that. And yes, that was the intention. But the market studies and the market shows and the bidding shows. Yeah, and that's all. Either we that or let it lie dormant. And we were just trying to give. And another wait another generation. You know? And to add to that, we were just trying to we're give another yeah, rationale. Wait right. another generation. So what's up? Uh, that's uh, all. That's all I have. I think I got it. Okay. Rich, we got it. Jeffrey, right? you got anything yeah. about this? Yeah, we got it. Um, no. Steve, a uh, couple of things. One, uh, some some good favorable news that uh, the Lawrence Eagle Tribune runs a uh, survey of their what is it called? It's called the. Um, Best of the readings, 2017, and Hillview Golf Course has been chosen uh, by the readers of their magazine as the uh, number one golf course for 2017. So it's a uh, wonderful so accolade to them. The system paid up. Uh, apparently it did, <laughs> despite the, uh, the drought that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, just as an update, you got a little bit earlier on the Athletics Facility Subcommittee, we're going to be meeting again on, uh, what date is it now, Michael? Let's see. Um, we will be meeting again to go over some additional um, renderings from our consultant on the 31st. Um, and it is the intention of the um, Athletic Facility Subcommittee, again, uh, everybody pretty much decided we're going to have a warrant article, to have a proposal uh, for the board's consideration uh, shortly thereafter and certainly in time for any uh, public hearing that we're going to have on the warrant articles, uh, that we have not come to any concrete, no pun intended, uh, proposal as of yet, but we're working on it. Hmm. Yep, Jeff. If I may ask, what are you talking about? I mean, what 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 is the range of things that you're looking at? I mean, well, the last time I, I sat in the meeting, it was anywhere from $435,000 to nearly $900,000. So, right. yeah, depending was, on the 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 the, I, the suggestion, just the, guess. the proposal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say the number. You can say it if you want. <laughs> Somewhere between six hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars is. Yeah, that's probably, probably a fair estimate. It's of the range probably right where now. we're going to come in at as far as a, a proposal for consideration and all the backup and the rationale and the reasons why uh, the subcommittee. Once we come to a conclusion, because we have not yet. You know, a portion of it uh, may be prefab, another portion may be stick built, um, which we, which is sort of a new consideration. But the 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 least cost costly method of using the, the building is, of the is, is, is not is, being is off the table, uh, primarily because the school committee is not receptive to the idea at all, and it's under their care, custody, and control, and therefore, as far as we're concerned, it's well, off the table. Okay. It's off the table, so it's off the it's table. It's under their care and custody, but it's our money. Uh, but <coughs> they have to vote favorably in order for anything to be done to it. Well, they have a lot to lose if they, uh, again, if, if they don't uh, uh, be cost-effective to the town because if, if, well, I'm not sure if, if, the, if the board were to, to decide not to use the money towards something more expensive, then the bathrooms wouldn't be built and they'd have to close the field. Bottom line is we have to come into compliance with, with the state regulations and that's our goal. I understand and again, that. And it, taking but into consideration the school committee's position at this particular point in time, we're looking at other alternatives. But you're talking about $200,000 more than technically we would have to spend to accomplish what the state wants but us to do. But there are other logistical considerations that need to be considered from an operational standpoint, yes. Dollars and cents wise, it might be the cheapest way to do it, uh, but it isn't necessarily the most uh, efficient way of handling the needs for a public restroom facility to mix it in with locker rooms. And well, that using the same rooms. I mean, no, but 
flow of people and all this, but we discussed all of this at, at, ad nauseum at the, uh, and quite frankly, I think I walked away from several of these meetings confused as to where we were standing and <laughs> sitting at the point, at this point in time. But we're, we're moving forward. I anticipate that uh, at our next meeting, we hope to have some sort of uh, uh, consensus. And again, I don't believe it'll be unanimous, but a consensus from the uh, subcommittee uh, for consideration. But what the number's gonna be, I'm not sure yet, because we're still waiting for some proposals from our consultants based upon the feedback they had at our last meeting. And people are getting a little bit more creative as to how can we do it, can we phase it in. Again, it may be something, it might be $550,000 to do the first phase, which is the bathrooms, and allow for an addition later on in a concession stand as more money is raised to do that. When you say raised, you mean by the town or through? Yes, either way. But, okay. again, the, the, no gun to the head as far as having to, to do it immediately and maybe some other alternative to do, uh, handle it temporarily. Session stuff. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a couple of parts. We have phased in project to meet the state mandate and our needs and allow for expansion or potential uh, concession stand later on if need be. I would, think we have, have proposal. We, didn't we have to wait for yeah. Yeah. a proposal. Yes, yeah. not get ahead of us. Then we can deal with yeah, affordability. Financing or right. whatever, right? And you know, getting a consensus amongst uh, the people that have to deal but with funding this our, thing. Our hope is that once the consensus is, is built among the subcommittee here, that they'll be able to come in and clearly articulate to the board as to what the merits of the proposal is, and that the majority of the board would go along. With. But we know that there's going to be differences of opinion between maybe members of this board, finance committee. General public. But I have a hill new question for you. I was wondering if you were going to bring up that sign they put up because uh, I've, there's been a lot of feedback and questions. And yeah, I think social I media is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you just give us some insight on that sign for the public? Because I don't, I don't have the full insight on the sign as to. Uh, okay. You know, I don't, Rich. I asked Rich to stay because I know you talk to a lot of people and you see the social media. Discussion about the but there's a new Hillview. sign up on the side of Hillview uh, to advertise the, the, the tavern down below, oh, which is going to be opening in the spring. Right. You know, and it's, uh, I drove by there during the day and made it a, a point to really looking at it and, and at night. And it isn't as bad as what was shown in the picture that showed up. At night, this. What? It, I think the pink. <laughs> but at pink night, you don't, see, public a I, you don't see as much pink at night. You see white. <laughs> oh, I see. I think pink. you see more pink during the day. It looks like so. Anyway, I cannot illuminate you as to the illuminate. I can't illuminate you as to as to the yeah. rationale. What, though, <laughs> but I, I tell see. you what, I would live with that sign if he can make that thing work. Yeah, absolutely. That's After all these years, right? Yes, we should have our priorities straight. You are one thousand percent correct. Just giving you the feedback from the community. Oh, I've heard oh yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I, and I don't know how thing. things get approved around here, but <laughs> the pink lights, if there's a way we can shut that piece off, you know, it doesn't have to look like a strip joint. That's what I've heard. <laughs> I'll say it out publicly. Uh, I agree. But if that's what it is. The, the only comment I would make, approved, then Michael, is that, uh, you know, it happens to be, you know, kind of around the corner from the house, which doesn't fit the the sign at all, right? Even though the, the actual the function at all is, is a little different structure. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've yeah. just given you the feedback because it's been a big social media buzz. I've definitely received emails and calls. Oh, I've got some calls. And I know you have too. Yeah. <laughs> the same people have called you and called me. If you live east of the some. Hillview, you can't see the sign at all. I just want to know if that was approved. That's all. Just make sure it went through the right approval process and then if it's approved day. and it meets the code, there's nothing we can say about it. That's all I want to know. That's why I'd say we'll get a response. Email. Yeah. That's all. And I Anything think Steve, else, Steve? it's important for Steve to have that. If it met the requirements of the code yeah. enforcement officer, then there's nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. It meets our code. And if people don't like the code, then they can go ahead and work the petition and change the code. But at least uh, Mr. Yeba knows that uh, people notice the sign. That's right. So I, think, it, I think you cannot miss it. <laughs> so there we go. Is that, uh, you know, just for the Clearly general information, you know, come golf season, the, the, 
the pub or tavern will be open. It looks hey, Go check it out. He's put a lot of money in it and reconfigured it. Well, it looks beautiful. Did a great job. Okay. So he's done a great job. Uh, Hillview did a great job in that kitchen. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, just uh, I would like to acknowledge the passing of uh, Nancy White, again, one of the principals at uh, Kitty's Restaurant, a uh, long-time uh, member of the community and uh, fixture in the community, and just want to offer uh, my and our condolences to the, uh, the White family on, on her passing this past week. Uh, again, very generous family and great uh, members of the community and business community uh, for years. And then... Uh, Let's see. Oh, just this uh, weekend, I, I have to say this is to my Republican counterparts. You know, I've been trying to get my, my my wife engaged in political activities for years, and she, you know, she it was a package deal when she married me, and she doesn't particularly like it. But uh, one thing that the President-elect Trump has been able to do that I haven't been able to do all these is get her motivated. So I just uh, let you know where. Uh, we're going down to Washington for the Women's March in uh, D.C. the day after the inauguration. And my daughter, daughter, the knitting too? My yeah, daughter. Yeah, 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 a little knitting. <laughs> I, and I don't knit. But, uh, you know, but, but for people that, that, that uh, normally wouldn't become engaged in the, in the process, I think to that extent it's, it's a good thing. Uh, to the extent that people are very upset about things, that's not so much of a good thing. And I think people have to work, work their way through it. But... Uh, so I'm excited by the fact that my wife is uh, becoming more engaged in things uh, for whatever reason. And, uh, my Seattle daughter-in-law will be there. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, Flying down to, she graduated from Antioch, so she's oh, yeah. meeting up with friends down there. Yeah, but, uh, but for those people who are going to, uh, are so inclined, again, there's going to be, uh, uh, and again, it's a nonpartisan type thing, but it has to do with women's issues and how uh, people feel about it, and there's going to be a demonstration in Boston as well as Washington and other parts of Massachusetts and across the country. So I encourage them to participate, and I'll let you know how the drive goes. Okay. So, uh, that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank okay. you. Okay. I have, uh, I just want to call to the board's attention that in Dropbox, contradict me if I'm not correct, there's a copy of the current revenue plan. There, uh, there is not, only because of my absence due to illness, okay. but we'll make sure it gets in But there bar. will be. Tomorrow. And uh, if you take a careful look at it, you'll see that uh, we approach really significant budget gaps, primarily in the school department and a little bit in the town, that the financial planning team is working on. Uh, and uh, over the next month or so, the board will have to uh, make some decisions associated with how we deal with that. Do so we fill all our positions on the town side? Do we have any openings? We do. We have vacant, vacant positions in, in the public works department in IT, um, and uh, depending upon some movement within um, some of our clerical positions, there may be a number of administrative positions that are open as well. GIS. <coughs> At the GIS coordinator position. There are a number of positions that are open right now. Um, so there's no new positions. Are you proposing any new positions? I, I don't expect to, based on where we're at this, at this point. Okay, I just send a little message again. I don't want to upset anybody when we get into the Capitol. I know you guys are on the Capitol. But I'm probably going to vote against Capitol this year because we have so many things that we voted on already that haven't come through. And I'll tell you, I'm really very upset about the whole water meter thing. And I don't want any excuses about the DPW director or anything like that. I don't want to go into this budget season and not have Capitol things that we voted on not moving forward. And if there's a way we can get this stuff going again before we come back and vote for more, I would encourage it. We, we've asked for, uh, the Capital Approval Committee has asked for an update of, and again, based upon your comments and requests, of you know everything that's been approved, what the status is, what, where we're at. I mean, we get a full accounting of it, which is pretty good. And um, From the school Tuesday? Yeah, whatever sponsor of the Capital Approval Planning Committee, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I, I can speak to three of the projects that I, I know are the most sensitive. First, the water meter project, obviously. Uh, I, I can tell you I've signed a contract with an engineering, an engineering firm, uh, Western and Sampson, to do the engineering work for the project. And we had a meeting with them the third week of December. There was an information request that they gave to us that the water superintendent, Mark, uh, responded to uh, pretty quickly. Um, they have a timetable <coughs> that they have drafted for the project that I can provide the board at the next meeting to give you some comfort as to where we stand and uh, where that project will go. The fire station uh, project, that's another one that's been uh, somewhat delayed. Uh, Julie has put together a pretty good schedule uh, of contractors. 
um, to do the work and I know a lot of the work on the first floor is scheduled to begin within the next month or so um, so that that project is gonna is gonna move the, the second floor is a little bit more uh, further out uh, but we can I believe she has a calendar that, that the uh, public works director has showed me that I could also give the board to maybe give a, a better sense of uh, where that project stands and then the third project that we've been discussing uh, is uh, the layout uh, for the reconfiguration of room 10 um, the meeting room in uh, room uh, 10 excuse me and uh, we have a draft of uh, 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 layout that's uh, in place there that we're just fine-tuning but I expect that that's going to move that's going to move shortly as well so there are a number of things that have been on hold uh, although many of them are popping free now um, the water meter I know was a big one um, that one it, it is one that did drag on uh, for a long period of time but uh, I, I think uh, when you're when you seeing at least seeing a, a schedule for that will give the board some sense that hey it's moving it is moving forward and there is some concern as to whether or not the number is still good so but we'll find concern. that out yeah, yeah. yeah. it's but it is an issue biggest concern yeah so but i know the school but again there has stuff. been discussion we want more stuff but we got to pay for the stuff we've already approved at top either don't worry about it thank you mm -hmm. okay i'll have to take a motion to adjourn so move second Motion by Jeff, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. All in favor? Aye. Aye.